Hey, welcome to this values at major shape enhancement drills. This is set one. Teacher Dom Spo, and I'm here to help you pass the board exam. The questions here are from the previous let, and our goal is to top the board exam. <laughs> To benefit greatly from this drill, teacher, I highly suggest that you download the PDF format of this drill. Just go to the description below this video, follow the link to the website, and click the download link. Alternatively, kasi makakalikasan tayo, di ba? We want to save some trees. So, you may just answer the drills by using a paper and pen, write your answers, and then... The questions are available on the website anyway. And then after that, uh, after answering them, come back here and check your answers. For this drill, set a timer at least 2 hours. If you do that, you are helping yourself by doing a self-assessment and self-evaluation. Okay, now go on and answer the drill first. I'll just be here waiting for you. Don't worry. Sanay akong maghintay. <laughs> All the best, teacher. Now, I presume that you are already finished answering the drills. Let's go now and check your answers. This is part one, set one. And our goal is to top the board exam. <laughs> With matching hands on the air, huh? Mas malakas, mas malaki ang chance na magtop sa board exam. Analyze each item carefully and choose the letter that represents the best answer in each item. Number one, the rationality of the human person does not help in actualizing his or her human being or being human if he or she, A, Constantly seeks opportunities for learning. B. Build his or her power of reason to justify his or her mistakes. C. Seeks the truth to rectify his or her past errors and ignorance. And letter D. Contributes his or her peace of mind for others' goal. What's your answer, teacher? In this item, rationality is helping us to actualize our being human. Mas nagiging tao tayo at makatao dahil sa ating rationality, ang ating kakayanang mag-isip. Lahat ng options maliban sa isa ay hindi raw nakakatulong sa ating actualization of being human alin ang hindi tama. Sa option A, if you or if we constantly seek or find opportunities or time to learn, we become more human, di ba? We use our intelligence in option B, we use our intelligence to justify our mistakes. Para irrationalize na okay lang na magkamali kasi mahina ako, natukso ako, marupok ako, mapusok. We justify our mistakes. In option C, we find the truth so that we may correct our mistakes and banish our ignorance. Iwasto ang ating mga pagkakamali at wakasan ang ating kamangmangan. <laughs> In option D, it has something to do with personal well-being, peace of mind, and helping others. So the correct answer here is... That's good. It's option B. Good job, teacher. Let's go to number two. The multidimensional nature of the human person provides the rationale of the core values in the program. The human person is described as... A. Total human person. B. Embodied spirit. C. Rational animal. And letter D. Spiritual being. So we are looking for a multidimensional nature of the human person. Therefore, we are talking not just our physical nature, intellectual nature, or spiritual nature. We are talking about the totality of the human person. So please, be mindful of the keywords. The correct answer here, therefore, is option... That's very good. It's option A. Number three. 
the, in the information of the intellect and will, man as a rational being must address the need to develop his spiritual faculties. This is governed by the guiding rule, a synergy expressed succinctly by one of the following. A. Values education is taught for higher spiritual good. Man is his in his pursuit of for higher good achieve happiness. C. Education is the search for the for knowledge and truth. And letter D. The object of the intellect is truth, of the will, goodness. In this item, take note of the keywords intellect, will, synergy, or combination. Of course, in option A. There is nothing wrong with this, but it's obviously more on will. And letter B, a very good statement also, but we don't see synergy here. Synergy, combination of intellect and will. And letter C, it's more on intellect only. Education is the search for knowledge and truth. The object of the intellect is truth. And in letter D, we have intellect here and we have will. So we see the parallels of our keywords here and this statement is succinctly telling us about the intellect and the will. So the answer here is option D. Good job! Okay, number four. What level of mentality has been reinforced by a series of advertisement, advertisement of consumer products that subscribe to subjective human satisfaction and gratification of the, at the expense of moral values and attitudes of the youth. Subliminal perception. Hedonistic. C. Collectivism. And letter D. Liberalism. The answer is... Hedonistic is wrong. <laughs> What's your answer, teacher? What are we looking for in this item? We are looking for level of mentality, not a philosophical belief or practice. So the answer here is option A. What is subliminal? Of course, it's a level of mentality. This is somewhere between consciousness and unconsciousness. And most of the time, it is in the level of our unconsciousness. Yung hindi na natin halos namamalayan. Maraming ganito sa mga advertisements at ang, mag, at ang magagaling na advertisers. <clears throat> yan ang kadalas ang tinatarget sa consumer, yung subliminal perception. Bakit? Kasi kahit wala na yung advertisement nila, patuloy pa rin itong gumagana sa mga consumer. Nasa unconsciousness na kasi. Patuloy silang nag-i-income. Halimbawa, yung mga advertisement ng Jollibee. Malit pa ako, napapanood ko na yan. At kadalas ang tema nila ay imahe ng masayang pamilya. Kaya kung nung nagkatrabaho na ako, naging laging Jollibee ang kinakainan ko. Hindi lang dahil masarap, kundi dahil I feel na at home ako. At ngayon na OFW na ako, dalaw ko pa rin yung si Jollibee sa unconsciousness ko. Kakambal na si Jollibee, kakambal na ni Jollibee ang masayang image ng family o ng pamilya, ng barkada at kaibigan. Ganun yung subliminal perception. Hindi mo na kailangang mag-isip. Automatic siyang lalabas sa'yo. Or sa bibig mo. Bigla ka na lang mapapakanta ng atin ang langhap, sarap. <laughs> I know, meron ka ding experiences na ganito. Yung iba, toothpaste daw. Yung pag bumibila sa, sila sa tindahan, nasasabi nilang, pabili po ng Colgate, yung close-up. <laughs> o kaya, pabili po ng safeguard, yung silka. Uso ito, lalo na kung sa probinsya ka nakatira or naglaki or lumaki na katulad ko. Nagiging major brand yung madalas nating mapanood sa advertisement o sa patalastas. And that's the power of targeting the subliminal perception. Kung ang ads ay tulad ng sa Jollibee, nung tulad ng sa Jollibee, walang problema doon. But this item is using the image of human satisfaction. Gratification at the expense of moral values. Marami din yan. Halimbawa, mga advertisement ng alak o sigarilyo. Yung isang alak, may babaeng nakabikini tapos nakasakay sa kabayo. O kaya, lalaki na maraming chicks. Mga ganyang image na sensual. Madaling pumasok sa kamalayan ng nan nanunood, lalo na ng kabataan. Kaya, kailangan i-review muna ng MTRCB para masensor. Okay, so the answer here is option A, subliminal perception. Number five. What is meant by person is a social being? 
A. A, personal a person should always be happy in the company of other people. B. A person has the capacity to adapt to the ways of the people. And letter C. A person necessarily relates with other human beings. And option D. A person chooses to, re to relate with others. So what's your answer, teacher? As a social being, we necessarily relate with other human beings because no man is an island. So the answer here is option C. Okay. Next number. Number six. The emotion as a petitive faculty of the human person may help him or her to become more fully human as in these situations except one. Which is an exception? A. Martha denounces immorality by revealing an illicit affair between two married co-teachers publicly. Allah. B. Says, secretly nurtures her love for a married man and decide later to overcome her feelings for him. Hopeless romantic. <laughs> Option C. June expresses his passion for fairness and labor practice by leading a union strike. D. Mr. De La Cruz, a school principal, overjoyed over the result of the national competition that his school participated in that he gave a party celebration to the whole school. And what's your answer, teacher? Please take note that in values education, our answer answers should usually be the ideal. Yung mababait. I'm telling you, you're never, you will never go wrong if you choose that. At kahit hindi mo lubos na, na maintindihan ang tanong, makukuha mo ang tamang sagot kapag kinumpare mo ang option. Halimbawa, sa item na ito, may nakalagay na except one. Ngayon, pag binasa mo ang options, halos lahat mababait ang dating maliban sa isa. And that is, yep, that's right, it's option A. Maraming ganito sa exam, kaya unawain ang options at ikumpara. Minsan, baliktad, lahat naman bad, tapos isa lang ang pinakamabait. Dito, sa item na ito, lahat mabait, isa lang ang bad. And si Marta, kasi she denounces immorality. Itinakwil nga niya ang, immora ang immorality or immor immoralidad, pero nagmarites naman. Chinismis ang co-teacher. In this case, a petitive faculty doesn't help Marta to become more fully human. Ang gossip o pagmamarites ay hindi nakakatulong sa atin to become more fully human. And the correct answer here is option A. Number 7. Which faculty of the person is used when one allows his or her friend to cheat out of pity? A. Will. Senses. Emotions. Intellect. And the answer here is... Emotion. Will is directed to good. Intellect is the truth. So the answer here is option C. Number 8. What do you call the human being's capacity to direct himself or herself to a goal? A. Self-introspection. B. Self-determination. C. Self-motivation. And letter D. Self-discipline. What is self-introspection? It's looking within oneself, an examination of one's own consciousness or conscious thoughts and feelings. In values education, it also means examination of our soul or conscience, soul searching, heart searching. Self-determination, it's the process of controlling our own lives to create change in our lives or accomplish specific goals or ends. Self-motivation, Self-motivation is the internal or inner drive that pushes us or moves us to take action towards our goals. It keeps us moving forward kahit ayaw na nating gumalaw or kapag nawawala na tayo ng gana or pag-asa. Self-discipline is our ability to control our feelings and tendencies and to behave in a particular manner. A disciplined person is able to correct or regulate himself or herself for the sake of improvement and development. The answer here is option B, self-determination. 
Number 9. What could be the basis for moral action to resolve the argument wherein the one be the one believes that cheating is moral while another believes an otherwise? A. The end does not justify the means. B. Majority of the students are doing anyway. So let's just cheat. C. It is better to cheat than to repeat. Repeal. It is unfair to study very hard while others are cheating. So the answer here is option. Yeah. The end does not justify the means. The end does not justify the means. Memorize this um, adage, this aphorism. The end does not justify them. It comes out um, almost every board exam. Number 10. Which one of the following best describes a moral person? A. Comes up with well-planned and well-analyzed decisions. B. Personal decisions and actions for values are genuinely internalized. C. The universal and absolute guiding principles are followed in acting and in making decisions. D. The desired moral and ethical values are genuinely internalized. What's your answer, teacher? Please take note that all of these options describe a moral person. So, we are looking for the best one or the correct that subscribes to the highest standard or basis of morality. And so, the answer is option that's very good. It's option C. The options A, B, and D also describe a moral person, but they are still between valuing and organizing, while the option C is almost in the characterization level. So our answer is C. Did you get it? That's good. Number next. Number 11. The intangible force and determinant factor that enables one to work and study hard to control his emotion, to cheat, or to respect property of others pertains to power, the will, intellect, conscience. What's your answer, teacher? Very good. It's option B. Our intellect is determinant factor that enables us to seek what is true. While conscience is the specific determinant factor that enables us to determine the good and bad, the right and wrong, thereby affecting our will in making decisions and choices with reference to what is good. Next number. Which value is inculcated when one obeys rules with unquestioned deference to power? One must obey rules because of its ultimate goodness in order to avoid punishment because of one's dictate of conscience and letter D because of respect for moral order. What is deference? Deference is the obedience or submission or surrender without questions. In this case, Deference to power or surrender or complete obedience and submission to power may be of our parents too, or teacher. In school, the case is complete obedience to teachers without questions or hesitations. In the, in the home, complete obedience to parents or grandparents siguro. Kung sa bahay or sa paaralan, ini-inculcate sa atin, inuukit sa isip natin yung ganitong klase ng pagsunod, ano ang gustong ituro nito, lalo na sa mga bata? Ito ay tipikal na makikita sa mga bata na gusto ng mga magulang is sumunod na lang sila. <laughs> Dahil kung hindi, kung hindi sila susunod, sila ay mapaparusahan lamang. Kaya sinasabi ng mga parents kadalasan, sumunod ka na lang. Dahil kung hindi, makakatikim ka ng punishment. So the answer here is, that's right. It's option B. Next number. Which is not a characteristic of human acts. It must be performed by an agent who is acting freely, that is, by his or her own volition and powers. It must be performed by an agent who decides willfully to perform the act. It must be performed by an agent who follows the rules of conduct. It must be performed by a conscious agent who is aware of what he or she is doing. 
The answer here is, what is human act, teacher? Human act is a voluntary act, which means that a person's free will is involved. Human act, your human acts, have moral implications. This is the opposite of the acts of man, which are involuntary. So options A, B, and D are characteristics of human acts except for option C. Kindly check the separate lecture on human acts and acts of man. Okay, next number. Number 13, the answer is option C. Number 14, the historicity of the human person proved that his or her existence in the world is an existence of time. Which of the following concepts best describes this philosophy? A. Human historicity manifests development and continuity. B. Human existency is an existence of time. C. Human historicity is prior to history and time. Letter D. Human historicity is an ex expression of human nature. What's your answer, teacher? Historicity, what is this? Well, it denotes the feature of our human situation by which we are located in a specific, concrete, and historical situation. Our existence, it's our time in the timeline, our actuality, not chismis. On the other hand, you know, time is philosophically defined as a mental measurement of duration created by man. It's a result of convention, you know, it's arbitrary, concept of time. In option A, human historicity manifests development and continuity. It is true that human historicity manifests development and continuity and development and continuity are indicators of the existence of time. In option B, Yes, our existence is an existence of time, but it doesn't necessarily follow that time, the mental measurement, were already existing or created by humans. In option C, it shows that our human existence comes first before the creation of this mental measurement of duration or time. And then in option C, or option D, our existence shows that human beings are unique historical beings because of our existence in a timeline but it doesn't necessarily manifest our human nature because it is something external and something created by a convention so the best answer here is option c human historicity is prior to history and time did you get it teacher <laughs> very good let's go to the next number Which of the following circumstances regarding the accountability of an act is applicable for an administrator? A. Person in authority have the same liability as their subordinates. Persona vested with authority have higher accountability than those who merely follow orders. Persons with higher educational attainment are presumed to have higher liability than those with lower education. Persons with higher educational attainment share almost the same liability with those who have the lower who have lower education. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is option. Okay, that's good. Option B. That's very good. Mas malaki ang pananagutan ng mga nasa kapangyarihan kaysa sa mga wala. Sabi nga ni Spider-Man, <laughs> ni Peter Parker, With great power comes great responsibility. Number 16. What's your answer, teacher, here? What is the key to personal growth and success? Begin with assessing oneself. Begin with an end in mind. Enhance one's intelligence. And assert one's feelings and opinion. This one is a little tricky. Your options should be between A and B. To kick off your personal growth, what should you do? The first step is to begin with an end in mind. It's option B. Ano bang gusto kong mangyari this year? Or after two years or five years? Then, we assess ourselves in reference to our target goals. Halimbawa, 
Ang specific goal mo this year ay magkaroon ng license, maging LPT, and then magkaroon ng MA after that. Klaro sa iyo ang ipupush mo na klaro sa iyo ito na ipupush mo talaga. So the next step is to assess ang sarili. You examine what you have, what you do not have, what you need to do. Kailangan mo bang mag-review? Nakapag-file ka na ba sa PRC para makatake ng let, etc. For some others, they assess themselves muna bago sila mag-set ng goals. Pero real talk lang, nauna talaga ang goal setting. Minsan nga, our goals come instantly. Minsan naliligo ka o nagtutut brass o nakasakay sa jeep. Tapos bigla mo nalang maiisip na, um, gusto kong maging mayaman. That is a goal, di ba? Then after that, you assess yourself. Ano bang gagawin ko para yumaman? So, goal, assessment, enhancement, etc. The answer here is option B. Very good, teacher. Next number. Which of the following term refers to the behavior of helping others where there is no expectation of reward for oneself? Aggressive, cognitive, pessimistic, altruistic. And the answer here is, that's very good, option D, altruistic or altruism. Kagandahang loob na tumutulong sa iba na walang inaasahang kapalit. No string attached, no hidden agenda, no hidden charges. It's purely altruism, altruistic. Which of the following is not considered a transpersonal strategy? A. Visioning and imaging. Critical analysis of situation or events. Meditation and focusing. Dream and fantasy analysis. What's your answer, teacher? Transpersonal. What is transpersonal? This strategy is going beyond transcending your present situation. Transporting yourself far from your present time and space. Example, thinking of your life situation 5 years or 10 years from now. Ano ka na kaya in 10 years? Principal ka na ba? <laughs> or master teacher na ba? Or may PhD na ba? This strategy is commonly used in values education. This is so powerful and effective to inspire motivation among our students. And you should be the first one to benefit from this. Halimbawa, ikaw ay, uh, as a reviewee, how do you see yourself 5 years from now? What do you want to be in 10 years? If you imagine or envision great things, then you will be more inspired and motivated to persevere in your reviews or studies. If you are struggling now, siguro financially or emotionally, yung iba siguro physically, or yung iba sa atin spiritually, then, Envision your target goals five years from now. And I'm telling you, your motivations will adjust. Hang in there, teachers. Kasi whatever you are going through will not last. Your tears will turn into joy. Your sorrow will turn into rejoicing. Just focus. That, my friend, is an example of transpersonal strategy. Among the options, A, C, and D, are transpersonal strategies. The answer here is... The option B, critical analysis of situation or events. Got it? Good job. Next number. What is the stage on Kohlberg's theory wherein adherence and obedience to rules and regulations is considered a moral behavior? Universal ethical stage. Social contract legalistic stage. Punishment obedience stage. Law and order orientation. What's your answer, teacher? And the answer here is... <laughs> yeah, it's option B. Adherence and obedience to rules is in social contract legalistic stage. So option B. You can check the details of Kohlberg's theory of moral development in a separate video or lecture. Okay, number 20. Which best illustrates the instrumental relationship as one of the stages in the moral development approach? I will do what I think is right no matter what. You scratch my back and I will scratch yours. Nice boy and nice girl behavior. Good work is rewarded and bad work is punished. 
Still under Colbert's theory, instrumental relationship gamitan. I use you, you use me. I love you because I need you. May silbi ka sa akin kaya mahal kita. Diba? Instrumental relationship. So the option A is under post-conventional, universal ethical principle orientation. And option B, it's under pre-conventional, instrumental relativist. Option C is under conventional morality. And option D is under conventional morality, reward and punishment orientation. So the answer here is option B. You scratch my back and I will scratch yours. Okay? Instrumental relativist. Next number. 21. Which best describes a person who understands his or her feelings, thoughts, and reactions and can identify their causes and possible reactions? A. Morally upright. Self-aware. Intelligent. Self-requested. What's your answer, teacher? <laughs> That's good. The answer here is option B. Self-aware. Number 22. Interacting with other people is an important source of personal change and growth. Which of the following do we want least from these interactions? A. Having learned from their experiences. B. Being inspired from their encouragement. Being influenced without a choice. Being helped by their guidance and instruction. What's your answer, teacher? Ang ating pakikipagkapwa pakikitungo sa iba o pakikisalamuha sa iba ay isa sa pinaka pinagmumula ng ating paglago bilang tao. Alin dito ang pinakaayaw nating mangyari sa atin sa mga options na ito? Option A, gusto mo bang matuto sa karanasan ng iba? Siyempre gusto. Option B, gusto mo bang ma-inspire sa iba? Aba, siyempre, gusto natin yun. Option C, gusto mo bang maimpluwensyahan ng iba kahit labag sa kalooban mo? Aba, syempre, ayaw natin nun. Ewan ko sa'yo kung gusto mo, <laughs> pero ako ayaw ko yan. Option D, gusto mo bang matulungan ng ka kanilang gabay at mga payo? Ay, syempre, gusto natin yan. So, the answer here is option C. We don't want to be influenced without a choice. Diba? Next number. What does introspection as a tool for self-development leads to? Comparing one's strengths with other strengths. Improving external conditions. Discovering one's inadequacies. And letter D, knowledge of one's strengths and limitations. What's your answer, teacher? So technically, if we do introspection, meditation or reflection, or contemplation. It leads us to all of these options. Diba? Lahat naman yan. Pero, the best and ideal answer here is option D. Introspection should lead us to knowledge of our strengths and limitations. Good. Next number. Which is the best feedback? one can give to someone who wants to become a better person. Give information on how you struggle to change. Give information on how to start him or her plan to change. Give information on how difficult it is to change. And letter D, give information to help him or herself become aware of him or herself. What's your answer, teacher? Do not be confused. When we help others to become a better person, especially in the case of our students, it's very important to help him or her become aware of himself or herself. So, our first step must be, must be geared or directed towards self-knowledge. And in the process, the student becomes aware of himself or herself, of his strength, of her strength, weaknesses, priorities, including bad habits or vices. Then... Only after that, we can suggest a plan or a game plan how to change, how to become a better person. 
And then later, as part of increasing the motivation, you can share your stories, good stories, how you manage to change despite the struggles. So the answer here is option D. Very good, teacher. Good job. Number 25th. 25th. 25. Which is the most acceptable psychological reason why some people are hesitant to go through self-reflection or introspection? A. They think they are too old for change. They contend that this is not necessary since they know themselves very well. C. They simply do not have time for this. Letter D. They are afraid to face their gray areas. <laughs> What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is option... Yep, it's option D. They are afraid to face their gray areas. Gray areas, you know, between black and white, between good and bad, it is where the actions of conflicts and cooperation take place. It is here that our world of emotions can be uncovered. It is where contradictions between black and white or good and bad happen. Most of the time, it's complicated to understand. And because it's complicated, we don't want to dwell in it. Or some people just live in the gray areas playing safe, avoiding the conflict that may arise if they choose black or white, good or bad. So introspection helps us to see our gray areas. And some people are afraid to see and deal with these gray areas. Yeah. So the answer here is option D. You get it? Wonderful. Let's continue. Number 26. Which situation below demonstrates a good strategy for self-development? A. Rommel compares himself with others and resolves to imitate their ways of doing things. At the end of the day, Susan examines the good points and the bad points her interaction with her teachers and friends. Richie highlights her talents in values and resents her teacher's feedback about her reading comprehension. And option D, Bernard believes that he knows himself better than his friends do, so he does not really mind whatever they say about him. What's your answer, teacher? Self-development strategy. So let's look at some key words. In option A, imitate their ways of doing things. What things? Good or bad? So no mention if the things Rommel imitates are good or bad. It can be implied that all things, regardless if they are good or bad. In option B, examines. Susan examines the good and bad points. It's like examination of conscience. In option C, resent. Richie resents feedback. Sumasama ang loob ni Richie kapag nagbibigay si teacher ng feedback tungkol sa kanyang reading comprehension. In option D, he knows better. Mataas. Napataas ang tingin ni Bernard sa kanyang sarili. Kaya wala siyang panahon na makinig sa mga sinasabi ng iba tungkol sa kanya. Kahit anong feedback pa. So, ang magandang strategy dito for self-development ay option... That's very good, teacher. Good job. It's option B. Alright? That's the answer na pinakamabait. Number 27. Enhancing a positive self-concept is one big step for self-development. Which of the following is a healthy self-concept? A. Picture oneself a bit above a one's peers. B. Regarding oneself as the best person. C. Seeing oneself as having very good potentials for growth. And letter D. Being humble enough to put oneself below someone's friends. The best answer here is option, yep, it's option C. Yung nakikita mo ang sarili mo na may napakalaking posibilidad na lumago o magtagumpay sa buhay. 
options A and B, mayabang ang dating. <laughs> Option D, napababa naman. Baka false humility ang mangyari. So, the healthy self-concept is option C. Good job, teacher. Next number. People with negative self-esteem are likely to A. Expect to be accepted by others Feel threatened by people they view They view as superior Able to defend themselves against negative comments And letter D. Think well of others What's your answer, teacher? Ang taong mababa ang self-esteem or negative Negative ang self-esteem ay negative din ang tiwala sa sarili. Ang tendency ay tumaas ang insecurities or yung tinatawag natin na inferiority complex. Maraming worries at mga what ifs, mga mga kinababahala at kinatatakutan. Halimbawa, takot na baka hindi matanggap ng mga kaibigan, pamilya or ibang tao. Takot na ipagtanggol ang sarili laban sa mga negatibong komento ng ibang tao. Takot na i-assert ang sarili kasi nga Niisip na mas mahusay o mas maganda, mas pogi, mas matalino ang iba. <laughs> Negative self-esteem. And the answer here is letter option B. Okay? Feel threatened by people they view as superior. Okay, next number. 29. What could best help school-age children develop their sense of competency? and industry a reinforce from their parents for every accomplishments strict rules to follow for better accomplishment personal satisfaction and pride of their accomplishment and letter d more opportunities for work so they accomplish more in erickson's theory of psychosocial development the fourth stage is industry versus inferiority between the ages of 6 and 11. In this stage, the children learn new skills. When they productively navigate this stage, they feel useful and they develop a sense of self-worth. But if they are not supported by parents or by teachers in learning new skills, they may develop a sense of worthlessness or inferiority. Industry refers to hard work, kaya pag industrious ka, masipag ka, di ba? In this stage, industry means working hard to develop or master the skills. In order for a child to be industrious, they need to feel that they are capable and competent. And parents or teachers should provide opportunities to develop new skills. Otherwise, they may end up feeling inadequate or inferior. So, the first step is, that's right, to provide more opportunities so they can accomplish more. And then, we give constant commendation or positive affirmations or reinforcement so that they may have personal satisfaction of their accomplishment. The answer here is option D. Next number. Which of the following statement is the most effective means of acquiring moral values? By listening to significant others for their moral values. By reading literature and moral development. By following the advices given by the significant other. And letter D, by examining what he or she caught and by reflecting on what he or she learned. What's your answer, teacher? The best answer here is, <laughs> yeah, it's option D. Option A and B are merely in the receiving level. Don't forget, in the affective domain, we have the re-revoc. Uh, that's our mnemonic. Re-revoc, receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, and characterization. Re-revoc. Memorize that. So A and B are merely in the receiving level. Option C is in the responding and option D is in the organization level. Receiving. So let me give you some verbs for receiving. To accept, to listen, to differentiate, to respond to. That's in the receiving level. Uh, responding. Uh, some keywords are, some verbs are to follow, to comply, comply with, to volunteer, to commend, to acclaim, to spend, 
or to spend leisure time and something like that. Valuing, <coughs> to debate, to support, to subsidize, to increase measured proficiency in something. And then in the organization level, to discuss, to theorize, to formulate, to balance, to examine, to reflect. And in characterization level, to revise, to require, to be rated high in value of, to avoid, to resist, to manage, to resolve, to practice, to manifest, etc. Okay, so in item number 30, the answer is option D. Good job! Next number. What is implied by this? Values education is expected to be integrated in all learning areas. A. Only trained teachers should integrate values in their lessons. Values integrated should be incidental. Every teacher is a values education teacher and let option D, teachers should teach values every day and in every lesson. The answer here is right. It's option D. Option C is a good statement. It is true that every teacher is a values education teacher. Yes, all teachers are values education teachers and so what? Did it say anything about values integration? No, it didn't. Option D is the clear answer here. Okay, number 32. Which of the following illustrates the connectivity of intrapersonal and interpersonal nature of the person? A. Effective relationship skills with others lead one to achieve peace in the world. International understanding demands deep sense of solidarity and subsidiarity among poor and rich countries. Personal integrity and self-discipline are important virtues in responding to the demands of social justice. And option D, psychosynthesis or personal conflict management is essential for self-change. So what's your answer, teacher? To find the answer, let's find a parallel of intrapersonal and interpersonal in the options. In option A, relationship is skills with others. Relationship is skills with others. This is uh, interpersonal. And then peace in the world. This is um, also interpersonal. Okay. Letter B. Solidarity, subsidiarity, solidarity and subsidiarity are, they are both interpersonal. And option D, personal conflict management and purely in and self-change, they are purely intrapersonal. So only option C has the parallels of inter and intra, interpersonal and intra. In, intrapersonal interpersonal and intrapersonal so option c is the correct answer in here okay so number 32 the answer is option c next number number 33 in which of the following classroom conditions can justice be highly operational a ensuring that all homeworks are truly done by the students and not by their parents B. Avoiding favoritism and giving special concessions. Implementing honesty during examinations. And letter D. Giving equal opportunities to all students to get involved in any activity based on one's capabilities. And what's your answer, teacher? The answer na pinakamabait pakinggan ay? <laughs> Absolutely. It's option D. That's very good, teacher. Good job. Hanapin ang pinakamabait. Number 34, how does one acquire and continuously develop his or her moral values? A, by imitating the moral behavior of adults. By listening to people with high moral standards. By reading books and literature on building a strong moral character. And letter D, by interacting with various sources of values. What's your answer, teacher? Option A is not always safe. Yeah. Because some moral behaviors of adults are complicated or sometimes is scandalous. <laughs> if we imitate them, oh, it's not always safe. And option B, although it's 
in the receiving level, this can help acquire and continuously develop our moral values. It can help us. In option C, yes, same in option B, it can help us even it's in the receiving level. So receiving, receiving. And option D, interacting is between uh, receiving and responding and the fact that it's an interaction with various sources of values it gives us an idea that those might not be a good source to develop our moral values especially the objective universal values so the option here that is the correct answer so between b and c we choose option c number 35 John is 15, teenager, has severe learning difficulties and has been in trouble with the law for disorderly conduct and truancy from a school. Absenteeism, truancy. John is trying to fit in with a particular peer group, trying to be a leader for his peers, taking on a negative identity role, and having difficulty adjusting to late adolescence expectations. What's your answer, teacher? Truancy is absenteeism, as I have said. And Jan is a teenager. In Erickson's theory, this is under identity versus role confusion. In this stage, teenagers are searching for a sense of self and personal identity. By exploring intensely, sometimes violently, their personal values, beliefs, and goals. In Jan's case, he is taking a negative identity role. So... The answer here is option C. You got it? That's very good. Good job! And next number. Which of the following describes parents who elicit compliance from their youngsters and deflect, deflect defiance from them? A. Assertive of their power on forms of threats and criticism. Permissive parents. Approachable and democratic in guiding their ch children's behavior, authoritarian parents. And the answer here is right. It's option D. Authoritarian parents, um, they focus on parents' authority, their authority, no? power tripper. <laughs> the parenting style is high in control and very low in connection with the kids or the children. Parents are focused on enforcing rules, punishments, and consequences rather than on the why behind the behavior. And then children are expected to listen and obey without questions. Authoritative, on the other hand, focuses on connection building and setting limits or restrictions in a warm and encouraging environment. So parents in, author in authoritative parenting uh, they, they set boundaries for their children, but in a loving way, with realistic expectations and age-appropriate tools and consequences. So the answer here is option D, authoritarian parents. 37. How are service in the home and relationship to authority explained? Parents deserve to be obeyed and served. Obedience in, is inherent, thus is service for the parents. Obedience is free and is responsibility for the parents. And letter D, authority equates with obedience of children. What's your answer, teacher? And the best answer here is option? That's good. It's option C. Obedience should be out of freedom. And because the parents stand as the authority in the home, it is part of children's responsibility. Number 38, Mrs. San Juan, a grade school teacher, is in dire need of money to pay for the operation of her child. She has exhausted all possible means to get the money that she needs. A parent whose child is in the honor role offers help. What is the best thing for a teacher who is in due need of money for his or her child's operation to do when offered? A. Accept the offer and try to be objective enough in rating of the child. B. Refuse the offer and explain to the parents nicely that you are not supposed to receive favors from parents. C. Refuse the offer and tell the parents that you deeply appreciate his concern. D. 
accept and offer accept the offer and keep it highly confidential <laughs> what's your answer teacher if you are in the situation of Mrs. San Juan you already exhausted all possible means so the best answer here is option oh yeah it's option a the option b is choose juicy ka pa ba a exhausted na lahat ng possible means besides hindi naman nabanggit na favor ang pera di ba and options option c another hypocritical answer refuse the offer and tell the parents that you deeply appreciate his concern and then option d it sounds fishy but you know also possible answer so option a is the best answer with an statement that she must try to be objective enough in you know in rating the child so the answer here is option a next number what is implied by this the family is the seedbed for values development the members of the family act together to shape the values of the children it is the parents who project the kind of character their children will become the, that state empowers the parents to educate their children. And letter D, all values are learned first in the family. What is your answer, teacher? Sit bed. Kamang tani man. <laughs> Ito yung punlaan. If you know, if you grew up in a public school, we used to do this. Yung kamang tani man. Ito yung punlaan. Tapos pag medyo malaki na yung mga seeds, yung tumubo na sila, umusbong na. Saka sila ililipat sa mga, you know, talagang tataniman. Bawa sitaw, pechay, talong, kamati, so mga ganun. O yung palay, ganun din. Nasa seedbed muna bago inililipat sa rice field talaga. So seedbed is a beautiful imagery used to describe a family in terms of values development. So, the answer here is Did you get it? It's option D. Ang tao sa bahay unang tumubo o lumaki. Kaya madalas lahat ng values ay natututunan sa bahay. Kung para kung you know, kung para mura ang bata or ang parents, malamang para mura din ang bata pagdating sa school. Kung mabait ang parents, you know, tactful, eh, malamang tactful din yung bata. So normal sa kanya 'yun, 'di ba? Kung disiplinado ang parents, disiplinado rin ang mga anak sa bahay at sa pagpasok sa eskwela. Kung ano ang puno, siya ang bunga. So, the answer here is letter D. Number 40. As the most vital agent for the transmission of cultural values, which of the following issues could be discussed in a parenting seminar? A. Understanding the development, developmental needs of children. Promoting responsible parenthood, communicating effectively with children, and letter D, identifying the impact of parenting styles. So what's your answer, teacher? All of these issues could be discussed in a parenting seminar. But the best options here is option C. Why? Because options A, B, and D are all general while option C is specific, especially nowadays. Parents should learn how to communicate. It's how to communicate effectively uh, with their children who speak a different language of love and relationship. Iba na yung lingwahe nila. So we need to learn their language to avoid a general, gener, you know, generational gap. So effective and constant communication is an imperative. It's a must. Number 40, it's option C. Number 41, which of the following strategies best exemplifies the clarification approach in values development? A. Individual or group action projects. B. Games and simulations. C. In-depth self-analysis. And letter D. Moral dilemma. What is your answer, teacher? Values clarification approach. In values education, values clarification approach helps students become aware of their values or identify their values and the values of others and to communicate those values openly and honestly through the use of rational thinking and emotional awareness 
The most common strategy here is the CRS or Clarifying Response Strategy. CRS encourages students to introspect, consider alternatives, and arrive at a personal stand on a values being discussed. Now, the option A is good for values analysis or action learning approach. The option B is good for almost all the approaches. The option C is good for values clarification approach. And the option D is good for moral development approach or moral cognitive developmental approach. So for more details, kindly check the separate lecture on approaches and strategies in values education. Inisa-isa ko yung mga strategies doon. So the answer here is option C. Number 42. What teaching approach could best be used in the lesson on caring for the environment? Moral development, values inculcation, action learning, values analysis. What's your answer, teacher? So the answer here is option C. Action learning is going beyond the classroom setting and extend to experiential learning in the community. So option A, moral development is developing more complex moral reasoning patterns. And the most common strategy used here is moral dilemma. So pandaan mo na yun. Moral dilemma, moral development. Option B, values inculcation is associated with uh, reward, punishment, reinforcement, modeling, imitation, and observation. Pinakamatandang strat ano yan, strategy and approach. Yung option D, values analysis, it helps students use logical thinking and scientific procedures in order to investigate social issues. So the answer here is option C. Next number. What can a teacher do? to ensure that the pupil or student continues to manifest his good attitude toward his studies. A. Employ alternative approach to see what one works. Request the other teachers to observe his behavior all, at all times. Design a reprimand to discipline negative behavior. And letter D. Recognize or praise for consistently demonstrating. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is option D. Yeah, good job. That's very good. Recognize or praise for consistently demonstrating. Number 44. What could be the best strategy to maintain your intellectual integrity in situation when a teacher cannot answer a student's question? A. Reprimand the student for not studying his or her lesson. Acknowledge the question and admit you do not know the answer and promise you will answer the question next meeting. C. Pretend not to understand the question and shift to another topic. Letter D. Manipulate the answer in order to maintain your credibility. Aba, anong sagot mo dito, teacher? And the answer here is option. That's very good. Option B. Dapat. There's nothing wrong with accepting the truth that we do not know everything. We are not omniscient or all-knowing. Pwede namang sagutin next meeting, ta, di ba? So, sabihin natin na, ah, anak, pasensya na. Um, sagutin kita next meeting, ha? Medyo busy pa ako ngayon, eh. <laughs> next number, number 45. Which of the following human acts is considered moral in the social contract legalistic orientation of Kohlberg's moral development? A. Mr. Tan, doing the right thing of not stealing because he would not like others to do the same thing to him. B. Mr. Tan doing the right thing of not stealing in obedience to the moral law. Mr. Tan is doing the right thing of not stealing in accordance to his own conviction because it is the rule of the society. Letter D. Mr. Tan is doing the right thing of not stealing because he would not like to, do, to go to jail. And your answer, teacher, is... It should be... If you answered option B, that is correct. What is moral is so <clears throat> what is moral in social contract legalistic orientation? Now, this kind of morality promotes the greatest good for the greatest number of people. It's like utilitarian. It sounds like utilitarian. For example, the democratic government is based on mutual respect, and we achieve this when we compromise and we respect the decision of the majority. 
So kahit ayaw natin ng nanalong presidente, pero yun ang ibinuto ng karamihan, eh wala tayong magagawa. Okay? Pero nalang kong dinaya, ibang usapan yun. Now, more on respect of the law yun. Okay? Option A is an instrumental relativist, quid pro quo morality. Have you heard that before? Quid pro quo? We do something or give something to get something in return. You remember the line, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours? So, quid pro quo is like, what's in it for me? Ano mong mapapala ako dyan? Okay? So, option B, that sounds like social contract. Option C is law and order orientation. Mr. Tan doesn't, doesn't like to steal to maintain a functioning society. And option D is pre-conventional obedience versus punishment. Okay? Reward and punishment. Answer is option B. Next. Number 46. Which of the following roles of teachers is using the ACES approach of learning? Value clarification. Facilitator of values learning. Co-planner of the student experiences. Or value director. Director. What's your answer, teacher? ACES or Affective cognitive experience for self-integration is an approach in teaching values education which uh, was developed by PNU, Philippine Normal University. In ACES approach, teachers are facilitators of values learning. So the answer here is option B. That's very good. <laughs> yeah, number 47. Bring it on. Giving punishment to students who do not submit requirements on time uses what approach in teaching the value of discipline and obedience? A. Values integration Moral development Action learning Value inculcation Punishment Ano yan? Pinaparusahan The answer here is hmm, That's very good. It's option D nung pagbinato ka ng teacher nung ng eraser nung elementary pa ikaw <laughs> which I experience um kikwento uh, ko kami sa likod ng mga kaibigan ko siguro grade 1 ata ako grade 1 ako no binato uh, sintado si teacher sapul ako ng eraser sa ulo um namuti ang aking buhok dahil sa chok at nang ibinigay ko ang eraser kay teacher kinurot pa ako sa uh, piningot pa ako sa tenga so, simula nun ay hindi na ako nakikipagkwentuhan dahil takot na akong mabato ulit. Si teacher kasi ay asintado. So, yun ay values inculcation approach. Effective! Kasi hindi na ako ulit nakikipagkwentuhan. Natakot na ako eh. So, giving punishment to students. <clears throat> values inculcation, the oldest approach in teaching values. ba? Pero, I think... Um, Minimize na yun ngayon kasi baka mabantay bata 163 na tayo pagka ganyan. <laughs> Ingat na lang. 47 is letter D. 48. What can a person who has reached the highest level of morality through the moral development approach do? Do the right thing out of expectations for some rewards. Do the right thing in accordance to the dictates of his or her conscience. Do the right thing to avoid punishment. Do the right thing in a conformity to the rules of law. Rules of laws. And the answer here is letter... Yeah. The key word is the highest level of morality. And the answer is option B. It's the post-conventional stage. So we have the conscience in there. 48 is B. 49. What is the basic assumption of values clarification approach in the teaching of values? A. Values are best learned when applied in the normal way of life in the community. B. Values can only be caught by learners through imitating the model teachers. C. Learners have their own value system and the teacher is only needed to help them discover their inherent values. And letter D. Learners can make, goods, can make sound value choices if provided with discussion using more complex moral reasoning. What's your answer, teacher? Yep. If you answered option C, you got it, man. Good job. The option A is an assumption of action learning approach. The option B is one of the assumptions under values inculcation. And option C is an assumption under values clarification approach. And option D is an assumption under moral development. 
You got it? Oh my goodness. You are awesome. Last number in this part. A student who is in the choosing level of being truthful manifests truthfulness in his or her behavior, feels proud responding to situations concerning truth, accepts the intrinsic value of truthfulness, chooses to be truthful if given no other choice. The valuing process has three stages, choosing, pricing, and acting. We are looking for an answer under choosing level. Option A is acting, option B is pricing, option C is also pricing, so option D is choosing. So it's the only one under choosing, even if alternatives were not given. So for those who watch the drills in teaching approaches and strategies in values ed, I mentioned there that the answer was accept the intrinsic value of <clears throat> being fair and honest. Sorry, my bad. The answer there is option D. Okay, thank you. So number 50, the answer here is option D. 51. Which of the following schemes of values integration is used when a school administrator instructs all teachers to integrate values in their subject matter? Total horizontal integration, partial vertical integration, total vertical integration, or partial horizontal integration. What's your answer, teacher? Option A, in option A, values are integrated in all subjects in selected grade or level. In option B, values are integrated in selected subjects in all grades or level. In option C, values are integrated in all subjects in all grades or levels. And in option D, values are integrated in selected subjects in selected grades or level so what's your answer the answer here is option c more details are available on youtube lectures on strategies and approaches in teaching values education it's in the last module all right number 52 Teachers of today should be able to manifest a personality who can act with greater autonomy, judgment, and social responsibility. These qualities can be enhanced by reflective thinking and courageous expression of thoughts and feelings, reading and accessing information more quickly and frequently, frequent interaction with people, readiness to help, independence of mind, critical thinking, and sense of common good. What's your answer, teacher? Let's do parallelism once again in this item. We are looking for autonomy, judgment, and social responsibility. Option A, we have two elements, reflective thinking and courageous expression of thoughts and feelings. Okay, reflective thinking for probably autonomy or judgment. Courageous expression of thoughts and feelings. Hmm, could be autonomy. Reading and accessing information in option B, it's, it has to do with IT literacy or skill. Option C, we have social responsibility. It's only one. Interaction with people. And then in option D, we have independence for autonomy. Critical thinking for judgment and sense of common good for social responsibility. So if you answered um, option D, you got it correctly good job next number 53 what tool of measurement is used when assi when we assign quantities or weights in describing the degrees of, of possession or manifestation of a trait value or behavior checklist questionnaire scale ranking test and the answer here is all right it's option c scale did you get it <laughs> Good. Now, next number. Number 54. Mr. Buenaventura plans to obtain detailed information about his students' study habits. What is the best way for him to do this? Interview them about their study habits. Give them a standardized test on study habits. Observe the student's performance in his class. Give them a regular check-up test or quiz. And the answer here is, yep, 
That's option A. To get more details, the best method or tool is interview. Options B, C, and D will not give Mr. Buenaventura the detailed information he needs. So, he has to use interview. Alright, next number. 55. Which technique best applies when using uniform, consistent procedure in testing? Confounding, reliability, standardization, validity. And the answer here is... Did you get it? Good job! When we use uniform, consistent procedure in testing, the best technique to use is standardization. Okay? Number 56. Based on the integral nature of the human person, there are two faculties rooted in every human being. These are the knowing and appetitive faculties. Which of the following sense best exemplify the knowing faculties of the human being? External and internal senses and will. External senses and intellect and will. External and internal senses and intellect. External senses, will, and emotion. Emotions. What's your answer, teacher? Please remember that intellect with the internal and external senses are under our knowing faculty. And will is under the appetitive faculty. Since will is appetitive faculty, and we are looking for knowing faculties, we should eliminate already the options with appetitive faculty. So will, will, will. So we have A, B, D. <laughs> The only option that remains is option C. So no doubt, the answer here is, of course, option C. So that's what we call the process of elimination. Okay, 56, option C. 57. Which is the most important requirement for a good testing procedure? Test instructions, advanced test preparation of the examiner, testing condition, test instrument. And the answer here is, what's your answer, teacher? Yeah, very good. Test instrument. 57, option D. Number 58. A moral dilemma item asks about what students would do if they found a wallet in the classroom. Regina responded that she would look for the owner because she wants others to do the same for her. Mark would do the same because it is the right thing to do. Which is the best way to score the responses? A. Give Mark and Regina the same score because they chose the same decision. B. Give Mark and Regina the same score because they gave the correct answer. C. Score and responses based on score the responses based on the reason for their decisions. And Mark the higher score. Mark has the high, higher score because his decision is consistent with his observed behavior. And what is your answer, teacher? Number 58. The answer here is option C. We score the responses based on the reason because that's where we see the cognitive effort of the students and the way they construct their answers. Okay, it's the reason behind. 58 is now letter C. 59. How is the I and thou relationship explained as embodied in the moral law? Two persons may be soulmates. Human being as a person is capable of loving. A human person relates with a lifetime partner. One person idolizes another as his model. What is your answer, teacher? And the answer here is... Yeah, it's letter B. Whose argument is it? The I and thou. Hmm, okay, it's uh, from Martin Buber. For details, check the lectures on the philosophical foundations of values education. We discuss this. The, philosoph the philosophies and philosophers behind the values education program and curriculum in the Philippines. Okay, 59 is B. 60. Miss Asuncion needs information regarding her students' application of the values they have learned. To do this, she plans to observe her students and note how they behave during the observation period. 
what is the best evaluation tool that a teacher can use to write down the details of his or her observation on the student's application of values learned. Anecdotal records, checklist, attitude scale, rating scale. The answer here is, yeah, anecdotal records. Mga informal rec records ni teacher. Whatever he or she observes in the classroom on the students, we put, we write them on our anecdotal records. <clears throat> okay, next number. What should her values education teacher take note of to validate Nena's claim that she fully internalized the value of integrity? Letter A. The extent of Nena's appreciation of the value of integrity. Nena's manifestation of the value of integrity. The, the amount of knowledge Nena has about the value of integrity. The consistency of Nena's thoughts, feelings, and actions relevant to integrity. What is your answer, teacher? Yeah? Did you answer letter D? <laughs> that is the correct answer. If we already internalize a specific value, for example, integrity in this case, it should be manifested in the way we talk, think, or act. In, all, in other words, there should be a consistency in the thinking, speaking, and behaving. And that's... Um, the answer here 61 is D next number mrs. Garcia needs to complete a record of the permanent account of her students behavior as basis for remedial help later which of the evaluation tools serves useful in improving efficiency and in keeping accurate information about her students a questionnaire B observation techniques rating scale or interview schedule What's your answer, teacher? Mrs. Garcia needs a record of her students' behavior. How can she do that? The way the students behave and deal with their classmates. So, the best way to do that is by observation. The answer here is option B. We can't do that using the questionnaire, rating scale, or interview. It has to be observed. Number 63. Mrs. Liban listed the following indicators of respect for others as items in this checklist. Which of these items is not a good indicator of the value of respect for others? Understands the opinions of others. Show tack, shows tack in a disagreeing with others. Listens while others are talking. Uses po in opo when talking to the elderly. Indicators of respect, which is not. What is your answer, teacher? Yeah, very good. The answer is option A. Options B, C, and D are all indicators of respect. Option A doesn't necessarily show respect. Okay? The answer 63 is A. 64. Mr. Kizon, asawa ni Mrs. Kizon, <laughs> gave his... Students a 10 item attitude scale to determine how they stand on the issue of abortion. After scoring the students' responses to the five five point scale, he determined that Manuel does not hold a position on the issue. What made him arrive at this conclusion? A. Manuel's responses in all the items are in the positive end of the scale. B. Manuel got an average rating of zero. C. Manuel's score fall within the middle category of the scale. D. Manuel is strongly disagreed to all items in the scale. And the answer here is, if you don't have a p position, the answer is letter C. Did you get it? Being in the middle means having no position. Neutral. Okay? Neither agree nor disagree. <clears throat> Number 65. Based on Crathwell's taxonomy of educational objectives, who among the following is in the highest level of acquisition of the value of love for others? Elsa encourages others to serve the poor. Edgar helps others, especially when requested to do so. Joanne shares the ways a person can show concern for others. Marco always gives to others, Whenever he finds the chance, 
And the answer here, teacher, is if you answered <laughs> D, you did a great job. Option A is in the organization level. Option B is in the characterization, but there is a statement when requested to do so. So, meaning, not yet fully in the char characterization. Option C is also in the organization level. And option D is in the characterization level. Okay. Next number, 66. Which change is brought about by discovery or modernization to increase production? Social change, technological change, societal change, cultural change. And the answer here is, that's good. Option B. 66 is option B. 67. What is meant by this statement? In the coming of technology, the computer has replaced to approximate the human thinking process. Fluid intelligence, artificial intelligence, computer of flow chart, insight. What is your answer? If you answered AI, that is correct. Good job, teacher. 67, option B. AI. Number 68. What could be the best reason for referring to media as today? A. Most of the citizens in the country read the newspaper. Media are multisensorial and could stimulate good and bad learning more interestingly and easily. The young have more time for the television and other technology than for their family schooling. D. The television, needless to say, is a better teacher than the school and the home. Oh, wow. And your answer here is... Yeah. Media nowadays are multisensorial. It's option B. Number 69. To balance universal and individual orientation, it is important to A. Stay safe between globalization and indigenization. Appreciate contemporary developments that transform our indigenous ways. Put aside globalization as just a strategy of the superpowers. Have an open mind to globalization while preserving one's cultural heritage. Number 69, what is your answer, teacher? Again, we have to make a parallelism. In the question, we have universal and individual. Okay? Universal and individual orientations. So therefore, in the answer, we have to find parallel of universal and individual. Option A, we have globalization. Yep, that's universal. And indigenization. Of course, that is individual letter b contemporary developments not so clear if it's universal indigenous ways okay could be individual culture and option c put aside globalization as just a strategy of the superpowers so globalization that's um universal only and option d we have globalization and cultural heritage so that's individual culture and universal. So and it says more substantial. So between A and D, yeah, it it says more substantial content about balance than option A. So the answer here is option D. Good job. Okay. Next number. All of the following describes how technology is affecting us, except one, which is the exception. Knowledge explosion. Cultural preservation, information overload, techno stress. And the answer here is very nice. It's letter B, cultural preservation. All of this A, C, and D affect us in our utilization of technology, except for option B. We discuss all of this in ICT, Information Communication Technology Lecture. So kindly check that out. The answer here, 70, is option B. 71. Learning is the heartbeat of society in the 21st century. This statement is best illustrated in which of the following? A. With advanced technology, a society that does not encourage its people to use the computers will consequently die. With a, letter B. The, the life of a society is the educated people. 
C. The growth of a nation depends on how much its people are equipped with learning how to grow. Letter D. Leaders of a society should be intelligent enough to make the nation grow. What is your answer, teacher? Learning is the heartbeat of society in the 21st century. In option A, use of computers doesn't determine the death of a society. <laughs> Remember, before computers came, people were already living peacefully. In option B, it doesn't follow that educated people are the life of a society. Do you agree? <laughs> Sometimes it's the educated people who cause so much corruption in our society. Matalino eh, magaling mang corrupt para silang mga bituin. Corrupt ng corrupt. <laughs> in option C, if people are equipped not only with knowledge, but the knowledge how to grow, then its nation has more chances of developing. And in option D, yes, we agree that leaders should be intelligent, but our own history shows that intelligence is not enough. To make the nation grow, our leaders should have a strong political will and should symbolize and embody a moral compass for its people. So the most uh, sensible answer here is the uh, option C. Did you get that? Yeah! Awesome! <laughs> Good job, teacher! Sige lang! Keep pushing! Next number! Which of the strategies should be directly observed to foster accountability? Award of government employees who display integrity. School curricula should be oriented to self-reliance first. Asking for official receipts in business transaction. Encourage growth of self-esteem. So alin dyan na sa mga strategies ang may direct it should be directly observed to foster accountability. Fostering accountability, pananagutan. The answer have, that we have, what's your answer, teacher? <laughs> the answer here is option C. If we, the clients and customers, ask for official receipts in our business transactions, we are promoting accountability not on our part, but on the part of the business owners. Paano? Siyempre, mapipilitan silang magbayad ng tamang buwis kasi mayroong resibo ng income nila, yung official receipt. Kaya marami ang nakakalusot sa pagbabayad ng tamang buwis kasi hindi naman nagre-reflect yung income nila sa mga resibo. Bakit? Kasi marami sa atin ang nahihiyang humingi ng official receipt. Feeling natin, you know, feeling natin hassle sa part ng business owners. Magmasid ka sa business establishment at or sa mga tindahan at may makikita kang nakapaskil na ask for official receipt. Ngayon, Alam mo na kung bakit iniutos ng BIR na humingi tayo ng resibo, ha? <laughs> okay? So, the answer here is option C. Options A, B, and D should also be observed, but they don't directly foster accountability. 72 is option C. Next number. The human person is an embodied spirit. This means the person's body and soul can never separate. B. The human person is body and soul. The body of a person is also his or her spirit. <gasps> the spirit of the person is also his or her body. <gasps> Wait, what's your answer, teacher? Okay, the answer here is... Very good. That's good. The answer here is option B. Option A is not true. Our spirit leaves the body when we die. <laughs> option C is not true. Our body is different from our spirit. And of course, option D is also not true. Because our spirit is not our body. So, the human person is an embodied spirit means a human person is a union of body and soul. Highly morphism. Number 74. Pakikipagkapwa tao is one of the strengths of the Filipino character. This is manifested in all the following items except in one, which is the exception. Moral strength or fortitude. Solicitous concern for others. Sensitivity to people's feeling. Sense of gratitude. One of our impressive Filipino values is pakikipagkapwa tao. How do you translate that in English? At ito ay naipapakita natin sa option A or option B sa ating pakialam. 
Sabi sa option B. Punta mo na ako sa option B. Yeah. Sabi sa option B, sa ating pakialam at pagdamay sa iba kahit hindi natin kaano-ano, solicitous, solicitous concern for others. Option C, pagiging sensitibo sa damdamin ng iba. Option D, sa ating pasasalamat o pagpapasalamat. So, maliban sa option A, ang ipinamamalas natin sa option A ay ang ating pagiging optimistic, hard work and industry, or our ability to survive and our flexibility and adaptability. So, the answer here is option A. So, because B and C and D, they all um, manifest our pakikipagkapwa-tao. Number 75. The scope of values education in the secondary level includes four areas of focus. Which one contains all the four areas? God community, family, self. God self, others, community, and world. Self, country, man, nation, world. Self, family, others, community. And the answer here is... Wow! <laughs> yeah, it's option B. That's good. The answer here is option B. 75, option B. Let's continue. Number 76. Values Education's goal is the development of a fully functioning individual. Which of the following is least committed to this goal? A. Contribute to the promotion and preservation of cultural heritage. Aspire for the attainment of personal progress and ambitions. Set up structures for sustainable development. Build a just and humane society. What is your answer, teacher? The answer here is absolutely option B. Values education is least committed to, to option B because it is something that individual learner should be committed to. 76, option B. 77, nationalism and globalism is least demonstrated by principle of laissez-faire, sense of common history and national pride, global solidarity and peace, collective commitment to national renewal. What is your answer, teacher? Options B, C, and D, they all demonstrate nationalism and globalism. Option A is the answer. Nationalism and globalism is least demonstrated by laissez-faire. Laissez-faire is, or in economics, <clears throat> is a free trade, free enterprise, which means that the government does not interfere in, in the natural flow of the free market. So, 77, option A. 78, values education is premised on the philosophy that the human person is of incalculable value. This means that every person has limitless potentials and that he or she is born to actualize himself or herself. The human person has a spirit that never dies. The human person's mind can infinitely think of anything beyond imagination. There is no price that commensurates a person's life and dignity. Incalculable value, ibig sabihin walang katumbas na halaga. So the answer here is, very good. Letter D, 78, option D. If our value is incalculable, it means there is no price that commensurates our life and dignity. Hindi mababayaran kasi walang halaga. <laughs> walang katumbas na halaga. That's what we mean. Okay, okay. Number 79. The human person demonstrates his or her being social by living in isolation to attain inner peace. Moving from one place to another until he or she finds peace and happiness. Interacting physically, intellectually, morally, and spiritually with others. And letter D, relating with others through effective communication. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is very good. Good job. Option C. It sounds like centrum. <laughs> it's complete. We interact physically intellectually, morally, and spiritually with others. 79 is option C. Which of the strategy below does not lead to development of honesty? 
showing the value of work and wise use of resources, asking for official receipts in business transactions, fighting for truth, for example, against social justice, joining a rally on salary increase. Which one? So, your answer is... <laughs> The answer here is option D. Options A, B, and C can lead to development of honesty. 80 is option D. Next number. Filipino lack of reflective attitude or self-analysis is reinforced by A. Being active in advocacy activities. Understanding the rationale behind the school activity. Taking a neutral stance in a social issue or knowing one's goals in life. What's your answer, teacher? Lack of reflective attitude or self-analysis. This is one of our Filipino weaknesses. At ito ay lalong pinapalala ng option what? Option C. Kapag neutral, di ba? Walang pinapanigan sa social issue. Parang walang pananindigan. Lumalabas na walang pakialam. Bakit? Kasi... Kulang nga sa pagninilay-nilay sa mga isyong panlipunan na maaaring makaapekto sa sarili. Napakaraming ganyan sa atin. Pag tinignan mo ang option A, ang pagiging active sa advocacy or advocacy activities ay nag nagre-reinforce ng kamalayan sa mga isyong panlipunan. Sa option B, malamang pag naintindihan natin ang rasyonal sa likod ng mga social activity, nagre-reinforce ito ng better understanding and appreciation of the activity. Sa option D, knowing our goals reinforces a reflective attitude and self-analysis. Diba? Paano mo naman malalaman yung goals and, and uh, objectives mo sa buhay kung hindi ka naman nag reflect and do something to analyze, to self-analyze self-analysis. So answer here is option C. 81, option C. 82. Pamathalaan. <laughs> Pamathalaan. A native Filipino philosophy of good governance is coined from the words meaning pamagat ng halalan. Pamana ng lahi mula kay bathala. Pamamahala kasama si bathala. Pamagat ng pamahalaan. What's your answer, teacher? Hmm? Number 82. The answer here is option C. Pamamahala kasama si Bathala, si Lord. This was first used by Consolacion Alara. Take note of the name. Consolacion Alara in her PhD paper. Pamathalaan is the heart. It was at the heart or it's at the heart of MRP, Moral Recovery Program. 82 is C. 83. Bayanihan and Balikatan are twin spirits of the Filipino character that demonstrate pakikipagkapwa-tao, kanya-kanya syndrome, ability to survive, hard work, and industry. What's your answer, teacher? <laughs> That's good. The answer is option A. Pakikipagkapwa-tao. Anong English dito? <laughs> Pakicomment mo naman sa comment section. Parang... I'm not sure kung alam ko ang English nito. Anyway, number 84. What level of value development is a person manifesting if he or she appreciates the role of values in daily life? Organizing, receiving, responding, valuing. What's your answer, teacher? Do you remember? The rare evoke, receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, and characterization. Now, in item number 30, if you remember, I already mentioned some verbs related to the taxonomy of affective domain. Let me add some more info here. So allow me to add something more. In receiving, if you still remember the rare book, the first level, receiving level, students show the or demonstrate awareness, willingness to hear, and there is a selected attention. So receiving. For example, listen to teacher quietly. Listen to others with respect. Remember the names of new classmates, something like that. So additional keywords or verbs are to ask, to choose, describe, follow, to give, hold, identify, locate, to name, point out, to select, to sit, to reply, to use. Okay? In responding level, students demonstrate active participation. They attend and react to a particular stimulus. For example, Participate in class discussion. 
Give a presentation. Question new concepts or models to fully understand them. Know the safety protocols and health protocols and practice them. So those are examples. Additional verbs. To write, tell, select, report, recite, read, present, practice, perform, label, help, greet, discuss, conform, comply, aid, assist, answer. Okay, so those are in the responding level. Rere v. V. Valuing. In the valuing level, the students usually show the worth or value that they attach to a particular object, person, concept, values, behavior, etc. This can range from simple acceptance to a more complex state of commitment. For example, sensitive towards individual and cultural differences. Show the ability to solve problems. Propose a plan to social improvement and follow through with commitment. Demonstrate belief in the scientific methods. So that's our examples. Additional verbs. Work, study, share, select, report, read, propose, justify, join, invite, initiate, form, follow, explain, differentiate, demonstrate, complete, appreciate. Rerevo. Oh, in the organization level, the students organize values into priorities by contrasting different values, resolving conflicts between them, and creating a unique value system. The emphasis here is uh, um, comparing, relating, and synthesizing values. Oh, additional verbs. Recognize. Mm, oh, hold on. Additional verbs, uh, for example, um, Synthesize, relate, prepare, organize, order, modify, integrate, identify, generalize, formulate, explain, defend, complete, compare, combine, arrange, alter, adhere. So, halimbawa, recognize the need for balance between freedom and responsible behavior. Accept one's responsibility for the behavior. Explain the role of communication in solving problems. Create a life plan in harmony with abilities, interests, and beliefs. Prioritize time effectively to meet the needs of the organization, family, and self. Okay, so nabanggit ko na yung mga halimbawa na verbs. Pre-revoke. Sa C, sa characterization level, the students internalize Values. They have a value system that control and guide their behavior. Their behavior is pervasive, consistent, predictable, and most importantly, the values are shown in their behavior. They manifest already. They are living it out already. For example, show self-reliance when working independently, cooperate in group activities, and display teamwork. Use an objective approach in problem-solving. Display a professional commitment to ethical practice on a daily basis. Revise judgment and change behavior in the light of new evidences. Value people for what they are, not how they look. So, mga halimbawa yun, na objectives. Additional verbs. Verify, solve, serve, revise, question, qualify, propose, practice, perform, modify, listen, Influence, display, discriminate, act, behave, manifest. Okay? So, here, and number 84, the answer here is option. Yes, it's option D, valuing. Sorry, I think that's a lot of notes. Okay, next number. 85. The level of value development shown when an individual is aware of the importance of learning and attends closely to classroom activities. Characterization by value, valuing, responding, receiving. Based on the examples that I gave earlier, previous item. What's your answer here, teacher? Yep, it's option C. A he is not only aware but he also attends closely to classroom activities. Next number. 
Professor Tilton measured the variable feelings toward drafting women. Grabe na may measure pala ang feeling, no? With the categories strongly agree, agree, indifferent, disagree, and strongly disagree. Professor Tilton was using which level of measurement? Nominal, interval, ratio, ordinal. If you are doing research, you are very aware of this. Mm -hmm. Sa assessment then, assessment of learning, we studied this. <clears throat> when we say, what's your answer, teacher? When we say nominal, um, in the nominal uh, stage, kasi apat na, ano yan eh, apat na levels of measurement. The first one is nominal. So, we calculate the data or the, the no, no calculation is possible in no nominal. So, we use names, labels, or qualities. So, no mathematical computations can be made at this level. So, number is used just to classify data. For example, religion. Um, for example, religion. So, number one, Christian. Number two, Muslim. Number three, Buddhist. Number four, um, Dawi. So, just for classification. Or sex, halimbawa. Mm, male, number one. Female, number two and LGBT number three and so on and so forth. Color, for example. Red, number one. Black, number two. So we just use the number to classify the data, just for classification. Yeah? Um, nominal. Religion, sex, color, gender, etc. Sa ordinal, ang sunod sa nominal ay ordinal. So here, data are arranged in order, but differences between data are not meaningful. Example, small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large. Okay. Or kaya first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. Okay, as a English proficiency, for example, beginner, intermediate, um, advanced, something like that. Okay, top cities for Halimbawa. Top five cities in the Philippines. So number one. Davao City, number two, Cebu, number three, Iloilo, number four, example only. <laughs> okay, so top five cities. So, in ordinal categories, the data can be ordered by, but the in-between differences are not meaningful. The next level is interval, so nominal, ordinal, interval. The third level of measurement is interval. The data are arranged in order, but the differences between data entries can be calculated. Sa ordinal, hindi makakalculate. Sa interval, we can calculate the differences. And zero is not meaningful. It only represents a position in, in a scale. For example, calendar years or temperature. So the years 2000 and 2005, for example, has five years interval or this is the same interval in 2015 and 2020 meron silang think 5 years na interval so makakalculate man difference nila so we can tell the differences between the interval by subtracting and adding in ratio which is the fourth level of measurement it's the same with interval but the zero is meaningful zero has a meaning for example distance length age, weight, yung, kil, yung timbang. Now, in item 86, number 86, Professor Tilton was using a Likert scale. Yung categories niya, merong agree, strongly ag agree, indifferent, disagree, and strongly disagree. This is a Likert scale. Technically, Likert scale is an ordinal scale. However, the results are usually treated as an interval scale. So for that reason, the answer here is option B. So we're gonna use, we're gonna answer here option B because the, the results are treated as interval. 86, option B. 87, Professor Reyes administered a questionnaire containing the following items. Please tell me how you feel about your advisor's teaching style on the following three items. Boring, motivating, easy, demanding, critical, uncritical. Professor Reyes was using a 
Semantic Differential Scale, Thorstone Scale, Gutman Scale, Likert Scale. And what's your answer, teacher? Yep, that's very good. This is a semantic differential scale. We have a separate lecture on development of values education, instructional materials, and assessment tools. So we're going to discuss all of this in there. Because we also use this when we do research in values education, in the field of values education. Okay? Number 88. The cognitive information processing model of career development stresses that career problem solving is primarily a cognitive process that can be improved through the utilization of a sequential process known as what? TWA, Life Rainbow, CASV, SSCT. Okay, if you studied HRM, Human Resource Management, probably you have studied this. You have studied this. Maybe you're familiar with this. But anyway, so the option A, TWA, is a theory of work adjustment. It describes the relationship of the individual to his or her work environment. Once again, theory of work adjustment. So this theory points out that work, number one, is conceptualized as an interaction between the individual and a work environment. That work environment requires that certain action be performed and individuals brings skills to perform the task. And then, the environment and individual meet each other's requirements. Halimbawa, skills on the part of the individual and compensation on the part of the workplace or the company for the interaction to be maintained. So originally, this theory uh, was developed by Rene Rene Dawes, George England, and Lloyd Lofquist in 1964 in University of Minnesota. The option B, Life Rainbow, or Life Career Rainbow, was introduced by Donald Super, an American psychologist, in 1980. Life Career Rainbow is a theory that describes career development in terms of life stages and life roles. It's a visual model that reflects a rainbow. That's why it's called life rainbow. Life roles starts from child and then it ends to homemaker. If you're interested in this, you can search on Google. Life rainbow career theory. Life career rainbow theory. The option C is CASV. It stands for communication, analysis, synthesis, valuing, and execution. This is a cycle or process used as a career decision-making model which focuses on action-oriented steps detailing what you need to do. So the cognitive information processing, cognitive information processing, this model was initiated by George Miller, an American psychologist. When applied to career development, this stresses the career problem solving is primarily a cognitive process. So, may, pang ano, pinag-iisipan. Dapat gamitin ang utak. So, it's a cognitive process that can be improved through the use of CASB cycle because this is a, it's like a circle. It starts with communication, then next is analysis, and then synthesis, valuing, execution. Then again, magsimula ulit siya sa communications. It's like a cycle of um cognitive activity, cognitive process. So, CASB. SSCT stands for Social Cognitive Career Theory. It's a model of career development that outlines how person inputs contextual um, affordances and social cognitive variable. So, ibig sabihin, um, this theory, social cognitive theory, affect the formation of vocational interests, career goals, and actions. It was developed by Lent, Brown, and Hackett. Okay, so in number 88, the answer here is option C, the CASV. This is the cycle that this item is uh, talking about, a sequential process from communication up to the execution. Paulit ulit lang siya. Okay, 88 is option C. Number 89, he proposed that values are the single most important element in the career decision-making process. Holland, 
Brown, Ginsburg, Lent. John Holland, if it's the first time you hear this, he developed the theory of career choice. Theory of career choice. So this theory says that our careers are determined by an interaction between our personality and the environment. And in choosing a career, people prefer jobs where they can be around others who like them. At gusto rin nila. Gusto natin at gusto tayo. So we search for environment that will let us use our skills and abilities and express our attitudes and values while taking on enjoyable problems and roles. Mahirap pero nag enjoy tayo. So yun yung kanyang theory of career choice. Pag pumipili tayo ng career, yung mapapractice natin yung ating skills and values and attitude. At gusto natin yung mga tao. Theory of career choice. Si David Brown, he proposed the value-based career theory. So ang ibig sabihin nito, this theory emphasizes the central importance of values in career occupational choice. Again, values-based career theory. So, ibig sabihin, values is the most important element in our career decision-making process. So, pag pumipili tayo ng ating trabaho, ang pinakaunang basihan ay ang ating values. Ayon sa theory niya, values-based career theory. Ellie Ginsberg, Ellie Ginsberg, yung kanyang theory of vocational guidance or also known as developmental theory, it tells us that the process of career choice is limited to adolescence and adult stage. Na pag lumampas ka na sa adult stage, na sa late, uh, late adulthood na or maybe sa elderly na, wala nang choice, hindi na sila makapili ng trabaho na gusto nila. Kasi nga, limited na ng age. So, again, sinasabi rin ng kanyang theory, yung theory of vocational guidance ni Ginsberg na due to crisis and many other reasons, so we change our occupations. And then after retirement, people's occupation change. So, Lent is one of the authors of social cognitive career theory that I mentioned in the previous item. Lent is one of the authors of social cognitive career theory together with Brown and uh, Hackett. So the answer here in number 89 is Brown. Option B. Values-based career theory says that our values are the single most important element in career decision-making process. You got it? All right. Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> Drink more water. Okay, let's move on. Number 19. Gottfried Son theorized that people develop cognitive maps of occupations based on three dimensions. Which of the following is not included in these dimensions? A. Masculinity, femininity, or gender of the occupation. Fields of work. Prestige of the occupation interest on the occupation. What's your answer, teacher? Si Linda Gottfried, Gottfriedson proposed that most people share on understanding of the world of work based upon the sex type, social status, and type of occupation. So, ang tawag niya dito ay cognitive map of occupation. Pinaka-importante yung tatlo ulitin ko, sex type, that's gender, social status. Ano ba siya? Yung Kares pa respeto ba ang trabaho ito? Or mayroon ba siyang prestige? Sikat ba siya? Something like that. Okay, prestige of the occupation. So, A and B ay kasama sa dimension. And number T is type of occupation. O, field work dito. Ang hindi kasama ay yung option D, interest on the occupation. So, the answer here is option D, interest on the occupation. Again, ang tawag dito ni Gottfriedson, ay cognitive map of occupation. So sa isip natin, kino-consider na natin yung tatlo pag pumipili daw ng trabaho. Okay, panghuli na siguro yung kung just in case na isama natin, siguro panghuli na yung interest sa occupation. Prestige baka kasama dito yung ano no, yung 
magkano sweldo? <laughs> Minsan kasi talaga, number one consideration yun. Anyway, that's in the Godfred's Cognitive Map of Occupation. Number 91. The social cognitive career theory is based on the social cognitive theory of Bernardo, Bandura, Brown, or Morris. So the answer here is social cognitive theory. Can you know <laughs> Very good. It's option B. Albert Bandura. Next number. 92. The theories of career development that were first developed. Developmental, trait and factor, psychodynamic, social learning. Okay, ang pinakauna daw na career theory na na-develop ay ang, ang sagot dito guys ay option B, trait and factor. Uh, it was developed by Frank Parsons. He pioneered the career development theory. His trait and factor theory was released in 1900s. After that, many career theories came out. So, nagsimula na yung meron ng rainbow, may kasbe, may etc. TWA, and so on. <laughs> 92 is option B. 93, which of the following factors best explains the development of maladaptive behavior in the behavioral orientation? A. Trauma in childhood experiences. B. Reinforcement of maladaptive responses. C. Anxiety developed early in life life d distortions in the self concepts what's your answer teacher what is maladaptive behavior well this is a behavior that interferes with an in with our in with our ability to function in daily life or adjust to difficult situations they are usually disruptive and dangerous examples are avoidance withdrawal passive aggressiveness self harm anger Substance use, alcohol, drugs, yosi, sexual maladaptive behavior, and so on. Options A, C, D can cause maladaptive behavior, A, C, D. But option B helps develop more, uh, maladaptive behavior in the behavioral orientation. So the answer here is option B. 93 is option B. 94. The theory that emphasizes the role of unfinished business in the development of maladaptive behavior. Psychoanalytic. Gestalt. Aldlerian. Existential. The answer here, teacher, is Gestalt. If you are a psychology graduate, so I believe that you, you really know this. So Gestalt theory or Gestalt therapy believes that human nature is based on holism and that people seek to be whole, mabuo, to be productive. So in Gestalt theory or therapy, a counselor or therapist views the person as a whole, both mind and body. Each person has needs that should be met. When the needs are not met, they become unfinished business. And eventually, those unfinished business businesses contribute in the development of maladaptive behaviors. So the primary idea associated with Gestalt is that the whole is different or greater than the sum of its parts. So the answer here is option B. Gestalt theory or Gestalt therapy. Did you get it? Your psychoanalytic Adlerian existential, they are all discussed in philosophy, uh, psychoanalytic Adlerian, yeah, in the philosophy and psychological foundations of values education. Number 95. Which of the following occupation could be appropriate for conventional pe people? High school teacher, office secretary, researcher, sculptor, sculptor. The answer here is, conventional people are conservative, well-controlled. They prefer structured tasks and they favor conformity. Usually, they like to work with data and they have numerical ability and attention to details. It's quite difficult to be conventional if you are a teacher, field researcher, or a sculptor. A sculptor. The answer here is option B. 
Number 96. A student asks for your advice on the most suitable course for him to take in college. Which of the following factors should be considered primarily? A. Financial capability, abilities and interest, employability of occupations, parental support. What's your answer, teacher? The first consideration should be the student's abilities and interests. Then, after that, other considerations follow. So the answer here is option B. 96, option B. <laughs> Next number, 97. Which of the following is not an example of a genetic factor in career choice? Body type, height, attitude, skin color. And the answer here is genetic factors. It has to do with heredity. So the passing of genetic information and traits like hair color, eyes, nose, even the diseases it, like <laughs> diabetes or whatever. So gi oh, given by nature, so heredity. So the answer here is option C. Attitude is a nurture, not a nature. Okay, 97 is option C. 98, his theory states that work satisfactions and life satisfactions depend on the extent to which the individual finds ad adequate outlets for abilities, needs, values, interests, personality traits, and self-concepts. Ginsburg, Holland, Super, Krumboltz. What's the answer, teacher? The answer here is option C. I mentioned this in item number 88, his life career rainbow theory. Life, career, rainbow theory. We also mentioned Ginsburg and Holland in there. So Krumpoltz, not yet, no. he developed social learning theory of career development, SLTCD. Social learning theory of career development. In this theory, he said that people make their career, de career decisions through an indefinite number of learning opportunities and their social environment which influence their views and ideals. So, for example, ang tanay ay teacher, ang tatay ay teacher, ang mga kapatid ay teacher. So, si Bunso, mal malaki yung chance na piliin natin dyan mag-teacher. Kasi yun yung kanyang nasa paligid. So, social learning theory of career development. O, kunyari, yung family ay mga siman. So, yung anak ay gusto na rin, yung Bunso halimbawa, gusto na rin mag -siman. So, halimbawa, entrep or business, businessman sa pamilya. So, malamang yung anak baka gusto na rin maging business uh, woman or businessman. So, ganun. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng social learning theory of career development ni Krumboltz. Pero dito, part ito ng theory ni Super na Life Career Rainbow Theory. Okay! May bosses pa ba? <laughs> Inom tayo ng tubig. Number 99. Which of the following is the basis of Maria's pronouncement? I believe in Jesus Christ's resurrection because the Bible says so. Ooh. Me too. Alright. Letter A. Sense of experience, intuition, emotion, authority. What's your answer, teacher? So the answer here is, it's based on authority. For Christians, the Bible is the authority, especially for non-Catholics who profess sola scriptura. Bible alone. So it's an author it's the authority. So Bible alone. Sola scriptura. So feed sola fide. Faith alone. Sola gratia. Grace alone. But for Catholics, the sources of faith and authority are threefold scripture, tradition, and magisterium. Scripture, tradition, and magisterium. Magisterium means the teaching authority of the church. Okay? So ninety nine is option D. 100. Last number in this part. Woo, malapit na break. Which of the following statements is true about non-verbal communication? It exists whether a person is unaware or aware of it. It is more meaningful than verbal communication. It is accurate and precise. It transmits thoughts and feelings. So, alin dito? Ang totoo. <laughs> That's your answer, teacher. So the answer here is option A. The nonverbal communication. 
<clears throat> is the transmission of messages or signals through nonverbal platforms like gestures, eye contact, facial expressions, posture, and body language. It includes the use of distance, physical appearance, touch, social cues, and kinesics. What is kinesics? Kinesics is uh, the study of the way in which certain body movements and gestures serve as a form of non-verbal communication. Kinesics. Okie dokie. The answer number 100 is option A. Let's continue. Number 101. Values formation begins with reality entering through the external senses. These images of reality are processed through A. Education of the child through his or her environment. B. The knowing faculties of internal senses and intellect of the child. C. Careful planning for the training of the child or recognition of the weaknesses and strengths of the child. What's your answer, teacher? Yep, the answer here is option B. After passing through the external senses, they are processed through the knowing faculties of internal senses and the intellect of the child. That's why it's important that the child is guided by the parents in the processing of values. Kasi ang bata maraming tanong, di ba? Bakit ganito? Ba't ganun? Bawat bata may tanong siniskwela. <laughs> Saka pa lang papasok yung kahalagahan ng careful planning for the training of the child and the education of the child through the environment. So the answer here is option B. Did you get it? Wonderful. Okay, good. Number 102. One of the fundamental characteristics of cultural values is that it is subjective. This means that cultural values are ideals which transcend time and space. Cultural values set the idea patterns of behavior. Cultural values are true and valid to all humankind. Cultural values are always changing and the changes depend on the perception of many persons interacting. What is your answer, teacher? So, we have values that are subjective and objective. Pag sinabi nating objective, they transcend time and space. They are universal or true and valid to all humankind. Halimbawa, do not kill, do not steal. Universal yan. Pag sinabi namang subjective, dynamic ang values. Nagbabago at nag-iiba-iba. Depende sa tao at sa lugar o sa kultura. Halimbawa, Ang paggamit ng po at opo ay importanteng indikasyon ng pagrespeto sa mga nakakatanda. Pero sa ibang parte ng Pilipinas, sa ibang parte ng lugar sa Pilipinas, hindi sila gumagamit ng po at opo. Not because they don't respect their parents or elders, but the reason is po and opo are not used in their culture. Wala silang ganun. Ipinapakita nila ang pagrespeto nila sa ibang paraan. And that's an example of cultural values. So the answer here is Yeah, it's option D. 102 is option D. 103. For an integrated individual to have a meaningful existence, it is necessary that the body and soul work together to do good. The spiritual faculties of the human person be further developed. The material faculties of the human person be given attention. The soul of the sp the soul or the spirit gives in to the desires of the body. What's your answer, teacher? Hmm, this is interesting. <clears throat> we are talking about oneness or integrated individual. Di ba kapag ang isang tao ay may integridad or integrity, there is a consistency and constancy or oneness in his or her thinking sp or speaking and doing. Thinking, speaking, doing. So, what we think and say and do are one. Consistent nga, di ba? So, in option A, the working of the body and soul together as one is necessary to do good. Otherwise, kung divided sila, hindi tayo mapatutulugin ng ating konsensya. Gusto ng ating spirit, pero mapusok ang ating katawan. Marupok! Sabi ni Jesus, The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26.41 Kaya sa Metaphysics, 
If you are a philo major or an ex-seminarian, you know this. In metaphysics, isa sa mga transcendentals ay ang concept of oneness, unity. It explains the inner relations or order in a person. We are supposed to be indivisible, galing pen kay Aristotle, ha? And then later, Christianized by St. Thomas Aquinas. If there is a discord, this unity or division between the body and soul, theologically, we experience this harmony. Yung pakiramdam na palaging may bumabagabag sa'yo, hindi ka pinapatulog ng konsensya. Kaya itong option A ay philosophically and theologically loaded. Now, in option B, Yes, of course, we should further develop our spiritual faculties, but it should be done with other faculties. Hindi lang yung spiritual faculties. In option C, yes, of course, we should give attention to our material faculties, but same attention to other faculties as well, dapat. Ha? Huh? And in option D, this is the last thing that we want to happen, yung sumusuko tayo sa kagustuhan ng ating katawan. Dahil hindi lahat ng gusto ng katawan ay makakabuti sa atin. Alam mo yan, di ba? Gusto mo laging kumain ng lechon, baka mahiblad naman. Gusto mo palaging magmarites, sayang naman ang oras at laway mo. <laughs> gusto mo palaging manood ng porn, aba, sayang ang energy mo. And time. So the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Madalas tayong nadada pa, nahuhulog, at bumibigay. Now, the answer here is option A. The unity or oneness of body and soul is very important to have a meaningful existence. 103 is option A. 104. Moral values are understood and practiced through the formation of the intellect and will. The following statements refer to the formation of the intellect except A. Guiding the learner to make judgments based on an objective standard norms of morality. Allowing the learner to solve problems rationally. Educating the learner to seek the purpose and ultimate end of life. Motivating the learner to practice virtues or good moral habits. What's your answer, teacher? Options A, B, and C, A, B, C, are all directed to the formation of the intellect, judgments, rational solutions, seeking purpose in ultimate end, are good for formation of the intellect. Option D is for the formation of the will. So the answer here is option D. Did you get it? Awesome. Good job! 105. The human person is endowed with faculties for optimum development. Which of the following is the proper consequence of this statement? A. A person's responsibility is paramount to freely seek ways to develop his or her potentials. The school and the home make or break the development of a person. There is not much one can do if he or she is not gifted with intelligence. Different people have different faculties, hence, optimum development cannot be achieved by any, everyone. So what's your answer, teacher? Kung tayo ay pinagkalooban ng faculties o kapangyarihang mag-isip at pumili ng, ng mga gusto natin, well, ang natural na resulta nito ay, option A, ang at sinasabi dito na ang ating responsibilidad ay lubos na mahalaga sa ating malayang paghahanap ng mga paraan upang mapaunlad ang ating sariling kakayanan o iba pa ang posibleng mapalago o mali ng nakakayanan. Ibig sabihin, responsibilidad natin ang buhay natin o nakasalalay sa atin ng ating paglago at pagunlad. Diba? Okay? Option B. Ang school at tahanan ay pwedeng humubog o humatlang sa paglago ng ating pagkatao. Yung option C, wala raw tayong magagawa kung hindi tayo pinagpala o pinagkaluban <laughs> ng katalinuhan. Sa aking palagay, ay mayroon tayong magagawa. Walang taong bobo. Nasa diskarte at disposisyon ang labanan. So, option D, bawat tao raw ay may iba't ibang faculties. Kaya hindi raw natin makakamit ang pinakasukdula ng ating paglago. Aba? Well, ang totoo, pare-pareho tayo ng faculties as members of the human race. Nagkakaiba-iba lang ng paraan kung paano natin hinuhubog o 
nini-nurture ang ating faculties. So, the answer here is option A. Aba, responsibilidad natin ang ating buhay. Kung paano tayong lalago at magde-develop. 105 is option A. 106. People are born good was a philosophy advanced by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Which of the following statements is most closely related to this philosophy? A. The individual as he or she grows older would never depart from what is humanly good. Babies are born good but once people can think of their own, they think of evil ways. Evils arise from the society or environment that makes the individual become good. The human potential for goodness is not strong enough to defy the bad influences from outside. What's your answer, teacher? Hala, Rousseau. So, uh, in option A, yeah, option A is actually not realistic. Actually, as people grow older, <laughs> diba, habang lumalaki at tumatanda at nagkakaedad tayo, we, we tend to divert from what is humanly good. The diversion is usually triggered by internal and external motivations and by some bitter experiences in life. Diba? Nasakta ng maraming beses, ayaw nang magmahal. Nabigo ng maraming beses, diba? Ayaw nang maniwala sa kabutihan or sa Diyos. So we divert. Yung iba ay hindi na gumagawa ng mabuti. So triggered by different internal or external motivations. Depende sa mga karanasan. So, we divert. So in other words, we divert from what is humanly good as we grow older. Option B talks about the beginning of everyone. Wherein the social, you know, we say the state of nature, in the original state, everyone was good. Pero, the ability to think cost us to think of evil ways. Yan ang sinasabi sa option B. Pag nagkaisip na, nakakaisip na ng mga masasamang gawain o paraan. Again, triggered by different motivations. Option C talks about the evil from the society or environment that makes the individual become good. Well, this option is contrary to what Rousseau said that humans are basically good by nature but the but we become corrupted by the complex historical events that resulted in present day society so it is in this society and the socialization process where humans become evil so kabaliktaran ito yung option d shows us a negative image of human weakness on the contrary Sa kabaliktaran, di ba? History proves us that our human potential for goodness can be powerful enough, can be strong enough to defy the bad influences from outside. We have a lot of examples for this. The countless martyrs. If you are a Christian or Catholic who witness how to defy the bad influence from outside. Mga saints, those who fought corruptions, those who chose to stand for their principles and values even to the point of sacrificing their lives just to defy the bad influence from outside. Madami nyan. And that's why Rousseau tells us that it is first and foremost important to develop the student's character and moral sense in order to optimize and actualize our human potential for goodness. Kung hindi is strong enough ang ating human potential for goodness, eh ano pang silbi ng education, di ba? So, that's what we do in values education. We teach them values as part of their moral compass so that when time comes for them to choose and decide, they have the knowledge and the power to resist the urge of thinking and of doing evil ways. So, what's your answer here? If you answer B, you got it. It's the most sensible answer here. Option B, 106. Very good, teacher. 107. Which of the following concepts refers to the somatic level of human nature? The mental reaction of the human person to a given situation, the realities in the flesh of the human body, the bodily structure and the color of the skin, the stand of the person towards his or her opinion and feelings. O, anong sagot mo, teacher? Our human nature has a threefold level. Somatic, 
behavioral, attitudinal. So pag sinabi natin somatic, it's our physical and material attributes. Diba? Kulay ng mata, kulay ng, ng buhok, shape ng ilong, shape ng bibig, <laughs> shape na size ng tenga, <laughs> diba mga ganun. As a material attributes, physical attributes. Pag sinabing attitudinal, it refers to our mental action to a given stimulus. Mental reaction pa lang. Behavioral naman is refers to our mode of acting. O, yung pag ano na, actions na yan. So, yung option A is attitudinal. Clearly, it's attitudinal. Option B is tricky. If you answer this, you are, you are trick. <laughs> If you focus on the flesh, realities in the fle- flesh of the human body, you will say it's somatic. However, pero, if you think of the realities in the flesh, so that's the focus in here, you will understand that it's not somatic, it's not behavioral, and it's not attitudinal. Rather, it is part of the principles related to our human nature. What is the reality of the flesh, for example? Well, The principle says our human body is united with the soul as the source of our vital function or life itself. So option B is the number one distractor in here. Do not be distracted. Option C is of course the somatic. And option D is attitudinal. So the answer here is option C. Again, focus. Huwag ma-distract sa mga bagay-bagay na makakasira ng iyong focus. 107 is option C. 108. What could be the moral basis for resolving the argument between one who believes that cheating is moral and another who believes otherwise? The, other, the, the end does not justify the means. Majority of the students are doing it anyway. It is better to cheat than to repeat. It is unfair to study very hard while others are cheating. Anong sagot mo kapatid? Of course, the answer here is option A. Please note that in the actual board exam, there is a chance of having a repeated question. Minsan once, or minsan twice, minsan thrice. Minsan nga, pang-apat. O pag-pag-lima na, swerte mo na yan. Pag tama ang sagot mo sa limang tanong na yan, na inulit-ulit lang, aba, ay mayroon ka ng bonus. Five points agad. So that's normal. Don't panic. Enjoy it. Okay? Tell yourself, it's normal. 109. Which is not a characteristic of human acts. It must be performed by an agent who is acting freely, that is by his or her own volition and powers. It must be performed by an agent who decides willfully to perform the act. It must be performed by an agent who follows the rule of law. It must be performed by a conscious agent who is aware of what he or she is doing. And the answer here is... Absolutely, it's option C. Very good. 110. Which of the following statements does not show the subjectivity of values? Different girls wear different shirt lengths. The Muslim and the Christians believe in God or Allah. The father of Bonnie wants to play basketball but his son wants to play bowling. Teaching is the noblest profession for Christy while mothering is for Vicky. And what's your answer teacher? Subjectivity of values. Uh, personal sa individual. Option A, yup, this is subjective. Option B shows universality. The belief com- encompasses persons and conditions. The belief in God. Option C, yup, this is subjective. Magkaiba ng hilig sa sport. Or hilig na sport. Option D, yeah, it's also subjective. The answer here is option B. 110 is B. Very good. 111. The material and spiritual nature of the human person makes him or her capable of doing the following except one, which is the exception. A. Relate with other people effectively. Think rationally and intellectually. Act freely on everything absolutely. And continue to grow maturely through life. Anong sagot mo kapatid? So the answer here is? Yeah, option C. Makikita mo agad na siya lang ang kakaiba. <laughs> Options A, B, and D are sounding nicely except the option C. So option C, option C, 111 is option C. Which of the following is not a correct description of the relationship of freedom and responsibility? Once freedom stops, where other people's freedom begins. Exercise of true freedom is never without respect for others. The person's free will is actually deciding to choose the will of God. 
Freedom is a gift from God, therefore it has a limitless basis. So let's analyze the options and let's see the incorrect description of the relationship of freedom and responsibility. So in option A, the poet Alfred Gardiner, if you know him, wrote this in his work. Uh, the work, it, the title of the work is Pebbles on the Seashore. You can search this on Google. Pebbles on the Seashore. He wrote, a person's freedom ends where another man's freedom begins. <laughs> Well, a better way to look at this would be to think that it is both our uh, responsibility to avoid hurting others and to be con concerned and aware of one another to eradicate the conflict of rights. Another way of understanding this is looking at our rights. Mga karapatan natin. Example, you have the right to move anywhere or to live anywhere, but... You don't have the right to just barge in in, a, in someone's house or property. Diba? Madidimanda ka ng trespassing. Baka mabaril pa. <laughs> this is a critical issue in our society because our freedom is usually constrained by the presence of others. But still, this one makes sense. In option B, yes, it is correct. Our exercise of freedom is always with respect for others. Alisimo lang yung double negative. Exercise of true freedom is with respect for others. Okay, it makes sense. Option C. Yup, this is also correct. Ultimately, our will is to choose the good. And the ultimate good or goodness is God himself and his will for us. This is also correct. Hala, yung bina lang yung natit di na lang ang natitira. <laughs> Option D is a fallacy. Just because freedom comes from a limitless God doesn't mean that our freedom has a limitless basis. If we will follow this principle, it will result to conflicts and imbalance in the relationship of freedom and responsibility. For example, you exercise your freedom without limit because you believe your basis is limitless. Then there are also other people who exercise their freedom without limit. Then another person or other people. If we, for example, apply this in the freedom of expression and say anything that we want on the basis of limitless freedom, and then others do the same on the social media, what situation do you imagine? That's on the social media. So what if in the actual life, everybody's freedom is limitless? What can you imagine? Do you see a harmonious society or a chaotic society? Is there a balance between freedom and responsibility? Well, this situation brings us to the state of nature of Hobbes, disorder and chaotic. The model of this right or limitless freedom creates hell, impierno, <laughs> for those upon whom the consequences fall. Diba? Yung matitiningan ang kawaawa. Kaya nga, nag-offer si Rousseau ng social contract at si John Stuart Mill ng utilitarian ethics upang magkaroon ng protection ng bawat isa. So, in there, we sacrifice a certain degree of our freedom in exchange for reciprocal protection. So, may limit yung freedom ko, may limit yung freedom mo para protected ang isa't isa. Otherwise, we're living in a lawless society. And for that reason, option D is the answer here because it's not a correct description of the relationship of freedom and responsibility. Did you get it, teacher? Congratulations. You made it. <laughs> okay, 112 is option D. 113. Which of the following best characterizes the nature of the human person according to Confucius? Do not be confused. A. All men are born good. Heart and mind are directly related to their concern about human fate. Human nature is not about life in the world, but about the life fulfilled in this world. The emotions and passions of the person are of great influence than that of his or her reasons. What's your answer, teacher? Hmm? Actually, options A, B, and C characterize the nature of the human person according to Confucius. The option A is also similar to the ideas of Rousseau and Mencius and even to Christian philosophy and theology. So it's not unique to Confucius. 
So option option D. Tinan natin option D. This is a part of David Hume's argument on the nature of the human person. Feelings have the power to result in action. So the reason is is a slave of our passion or emotion. Kay Hume ito. Yung options uh, between B and C. So yun na lang yung So the best answer here is option C. Eh bakit? Eh hindi lang tayo nabubuhay sa mundong ito. Kundi nagsisikap din tayo na may magawa sa buhay. So that's the best character, uh, characteristic of the human nature according to Confucius. 113 is option C. The theory which states that human behavior can be explained with reference to the two primary motives of pleasure and pain, empiricism, utilitarianism, hedonism, existentialism, and your answer should be option C. Very good! 114 is option C. 115. The historicity of the human person proved that his or her existence in the world is an existence of time. Which of the following concepts best describes this philosophy? A. Human historicity is an existence of time. Human historicity manifests development and continuity. Human historicity is prior to history and time. And his human historicity is an expression of human nature. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is option C. Very good. Na retain na yata. So I already explained this in item number four. So the explanation is available in there. Pakibalikan na lang if you forgot. Number 116. Which of the following statements explicates the theory of Bentham's understanding of the human nature? Nature of the human person can be adequately described without mention of social relationships. Human nature has placed mankind under the governance of sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. Human nature reveals a psychological, ontological, and also moral individualism where the individual human being is conceived as the source of values and as himself or herself the supreme value. Human nature refers to the composition of material and spiritual faculties given by the Creator. And your answer here is... Well, do you remember the explanation of Bentham on human nature? According to him, human beings are governed by two sovereign masters, pleasure and pain. And our behaviors are motivated by the need to increase pleasure and to decrease pain. So the answer here is option B. So I explain ko yan doon sa philosophical foundations of values education. Pakiting na, na lang. Okay, 116 is option B. 117. Which of the following should be the ultimate basis for the guiding principles of values development? Deped Values Education Program. Kohlberg's Moral Development. Moral Law or Natural Law. Scheller's Values Hierarchy. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is option C. Natural law is recognized by all men regardless of belief, race, culture, or historical circumstances. 117 is option C. 118. What is the best interpretation of the statement? One of the fundamental characteristics of cultural and behavioral values is that it is subjective. A. Cultural values are ideals which transcend time and space. Cultural values are normative patterns of behavior. Cultural values are always changing depending on one's perception. Cultural values are guiding principles of the members of the society. And the answer here is, again, subjective values are you know, dynamic and always changing. So the answer here is option C. 119. Which of the following statements concurs with the objectivity of values? Religions promote values based on their own doctrine. Cultural values are based on the people's concept of good and right. Respect as a value has not changed through the years even with the young generation. People may have different perceptions of what is good depending on their own experiences. This time we are looking at the objectivity of values. Options A, B, and D are all subjective and cultural values and the answer here is option C. If values are objective, they are unchanging. Okay? Next number. 120. Which of these statements describes the theory of Hobbes about human nature? Human beings are physical objects. 
human beings are composed of body and soul. Human beings are moral agents. Human beings are vegetative. And your answer is? Yeah, very good. It's option A. Human beings are physical objects, sophisticated machine, and whose functions and activities can be described and explained in purely mechanistic terms. Physical objects. 120 is option A. 121. The theory in moral philosophy which states that actions are judged to be right and or wrong according to their consequences. Naturalistic. Existentialism. Utilitarianism. Humanism. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is... Right, utilitarianism. Can a Bentham end? Mill. 121 is option C. 122. The human person is an embodied spirit. This statement means that the human person is body and soul. The body of the person is also his or her spirit. The spirit of the person is also his or her body. The person's body and soul can never be separated. What's your answer? The answer here is... Yep, option A. The human person is not just the body or not just the mind. It's the union of body and soul. And they can be separated in the process which we call death. So the answer is option A. Pag talaga na mamatay na, ay nagkakahiwalay na. Okay, 122 is option A. 123. The statement which does not describe the non-material faculties of the human person is It is eternal and has endless potential. It is the breath of life. It is the biological mechanism of the human person. It is a gift from God for the per perfection of the human person. What's your answer? So options A, B, and D describe the non-material faculties of the human person. So the option C is the answer in here. 123 is option C. 124. The action the end doesn't justify the means, simply explains that the worthiness of purpose does not make an evil act good. An evil act when done in good faith is acceptable. An evil act when done with good intention is debatable. The utility of means is best evaluated by its motive. Hala, what's your answer, teacher? So in option A, Tagalog tayo. Para ba to? <laughs> Kahit maganda ang layunin, pero ang pamamaraan ay masama, masama pa rin. So, gusto mong magbigay ng malaking donasyon sa mahihirap na pamilya halimbawa, pero ang paraan mo ay mang scam ng ibang tao sa GCash, aba, hindi pa rin accepted ang purpose mo na makatulong sa mahihirap. Okay? In option B, sinasabi dito na okay lang mang scam sa GCash, total, i-donate mo naman sa mahihirap. So, accepted siya. Okay lang yan. Yan ang sinasabi sa option B. Sabi naman sa option C, hmm, sinasabi dito na, kailangan mo ng pag-isipan o pagtalunan. Debatable kasi. Kung okay lang na mang scam sa GCash, total, i-donate mo naman sa mahihirap. So, debatable daw. So, in option D, Sabi dito na, ang pamamaraan na, na gagamitin mo ay kailangang suriin ayon sa motibo. Parang sinasabi dito na, kung maganda ang motibo, okay lang kahit anong paraan or means ang gawin. Pero dapat, alam mo nyo, ang, ang gagamitin na means or paraan ay suriin kung tama o mali ang means. Ang pagsusuri ay ayon sa tama o mali dapat, hindi ayon sa motibo. So, kahit Kasi kahit ano pang motibo natin kung mali talaga ang means, eh hindi pa rin siya katanggap-tanggap. And for that reason, the answer here and the only acceptable answer is option A. Iniiba lang ang statement pero ang ibig niya pa rin sabihin ay the end does not justify the means pa rin. So 124 is option A. Did you get it? That's very good. 125. The following concepts describe the personhood of human beings. Which of the following is the best description? A. Personhood should not be contacted to man's humanity and individuality. Personhood of man is the seat of man's uniqueness. Personhood of man makes an individual a person. Personhood of man is based on his or her nature. What's your answer, teacher? What is personhood? Personhood is... The sum total of the goals, values, rules you live by, your personality, your knowledge, your character, and your skills. 
So the answer here is option D. Personhood is based on our human nature. As a human being or as a member of the human race, we automatically have our dignity and rights pag pinanganak. So we can also say, our being human, that is our human nature, makes us a person with inherent dignity and right. This is crucial in the debate going on regarding the issue of abortion. Well, anyway, the answer here, 125, is option D. Good job. Let's continue. Number 126. The development of the human person should be guided by the framework that... A. There is a supreme being more powerful than oneself. The human person's potentials are meant to unfold by themselves. C. The development of the human is limitless. And letter D. The human person is endowed with faculties for optimum development. So what's your answer, teacher? Your, your, your options should be between A and D. And let me guess, if you are a Christian or an XM like me, or if you graduated in a Catholic or Christian or Islamic or sectarian school, let me guess, your answer is option A. <laughs> so that's my answer too. There's nothing wrong with that. And we do not negate this kind of frame or framework because that is already given. Well, option D gives us a philosophical and psychological answer or framework that helps us understand the development of the human person. Take note, um, values education is not just a theological subject. It's not a theological subject. Although, we usually touch theological concepts and doctrines or principles. Not all students are Christians or Catholics or Muslims. Some of them are non-religious or non-spiritual or reli no religious affiliation at all. Especially those in the senior high school and junior high school, some of them distance themselves from religion. With that, it's more powerful and more convincing for them to use philosophical argument in order to connect with them. And as a values education teacher, religion and theology should be our last resort. Going back to option D, the framework that we are endowed with faculties for optimum development is a philosophical guide for values education to outline curriculum and learning activities that are geared towards the optimum development of the students. And for that reason, the answer here is option D. Did you get it, teacher? Hmm, that's very good. Good job. 127. The immutability of values compels the person to A. Follow the, follow the laws of the society as his or her primordial goal. Decide whether to become just and become human or become unjust and destroy oneself. Act on his own free will according to his or her own concept of good. Stand by his or her own cultural beliefs and undermines traditions of other cultures. What's your answer, teacher? Immutable means unchanging. So, immutable values are absolute moral values that are objective, universal, and external. Dahil immutable ang values, it compels us to option B. Decide whether to become just and become human or become unjust and destroy oneself. Diba? Kung naalala mo yung concept of oneness or unity sa transcendental, you create division in yourself if we kind of uh, go against this nature, natural law. So options A, C, and D are all actions we take if values are behavioral and cultural. That is subjective, societal, and situational. So 127 is option B. 128, which is a correct concept of the human person's freedom? The, the person's free will is, as a gift from God, is a license to act freely and infinitely. Freedom is exercised depending on one's ability to respond justly. The human person's potential to free himself or herself from ignorance depends on the opportunities that come his or her way. Free will as a spiritual gift actually means that a child of God has the option to disobey his or her creator. What's your answer, teacher? Alin ang pinakamabait na sagot? 
And the answer here is option B. Number 128, option B. Number 129. The rationality of the human person does not help in actualizing his or her being human if he or she A. Constantly seeks opportunities of, for learning B. Builds his or her power of reason to justify his or her mistakes Seeks the truth to rectify his or her past errors and ignorance D. Contributes his or her peace of mind for others' goal And the answer here is Yep, 129. The answer here is option B. I already explained this in item number 1. 130. Educating the intellect is one major goal of values education, whether done formally or informally. Which of the following is not an acceptable way of educating the intellect? A. A parent explains to the child the reason why she must not take others' property. Teachers are able to let their students recognize the adverse effects of pornographic materials on their be social behavior. TV advertisers have exerted effort on integrating moral values in their materials. Induced abortion was justified in a debate by a group of bright students. Hence, others now have a basis for favoring induced abortion. Hmm, alin ang hindi mabait na sagot? <laughs> The answer is, of course, option D. 130 is option D. 131. Values education helps in the person's strengthening the will through A. Allowing the individual to learn from his or her whims. Capriccio. Giving the student full responsibility for his or her immature decisions. Strengthening the person's appetitive will to follow what is good and resist evil. Giving the person absolute freedom to follow his or her will. Mm. <laughs> the answer is option C. Strengthening the person's appetitive will to follow what is good and resist evil. Basic yan sa values ed. 132. The formation of the intellect and will is dependent on many factors. Which of the following should be of the least consideration? A. Role models, knowledge of moral principles, inner strength of the person, failures made in the past. And the answer here, teacher, is what? Alin ang hindi na dapat masyadong bigyang, masyadong pansin o diin sa formation ng intellect and will? Yep, the answer here is option D. Ang nakaraan ay nakaraan na, huwag kitkitin ang pilat na matagal nang nahilom. <laughs> Dahil pag pinilit mong kitkitin, masusugat lang ito at muling dadanak ang dugo. <laughs> okay, the answer is option D. 133. The ultimate essence of being and becoming a human is to search for the ultimate reason of things. To do good things while it's still, while it's still living. To achieve the highest level of self-actualization. To strive for human perfection leading his or her to the highest good and absolute goodness or good. The answer here, teacher, is all of these are correct. But the ultimate essence of becoming a human person or is a human being is to search for the ultimate reason of things. Yeah? That's an option A. After you do, you know, after you do good, after you achieve your highest goals, after you strive for human perfection. So, so what? What's the next? Yeah? So you search for the ultimate reason of things. That, uh, you know, don't stop in one station for good. So we have to keep going. The journey is never over. Don't stop enjoying the things you have. Go and find the giver of the things we have. Amen. <laughs> 133 is A. 134. Which of the following conditions best exemplifies the position of a good action done on account of an evil motive? A. When a teacher gives a high grade to a student in order to seduce her later. Hala. When a teacher gives an exemption in examination in favor of high-performing students. When a colleague offers professional assistance for peer approval. When a student gives an excellent response or answer. To prove his capacity to the teacher. What's your answer, teacher? 134. Yeah, options B, C, and D have good motive except sa option A. Nabigyan ng 
mataas na grade si teacher kasi later on isisidus niya yung estudyante hala <laughs> okay 134 is A 135 which of the following statements regarding the effect of the motive of an, of an action is not acceptable A a good act with a bad motive makes the moral action evil a good act done on account of a good purpose acquires an additional merit the goodness of, or badness of an indifferent act is highly dependent on the motive of the doer. A bad action done on account of a good intention or a purpose is permissible. 135 options A, B, and C are acceptable, but option D is not acceptable. 135 option D. 136. The universality of human nature allows the person to act in accordance to his nature, become a truly human person, attain his or her perfection, realize that all human beings are the same. The answer is option A. Very good. Since human nature is universal, it allows us to act in accordance to our nature wherever we go, regardless of culture. 137. Knowing what is right means doing what is right, is the recurring dictum of Socrates. Which of the following statements is most closely related to this philosophy? A. Knowledge of what is right makes the person good. Knowledge of what it, the good life is means life means living a good life. Knowledge of what is right allows the person to love the good. Knowledge of what is right means knowing what is good. 137 the closest philosophy is option b knowledge of what good life is means living a good life 137 is b 138 which of the following is the tool for knowing and understanding the nature of the human person truth as the ultimate criterion reason and freedom for intellect and will substantial union of body and soul 138, what's your answer, teacher? It's option C, intellect and will. 139, the Constitution is the basic law of the land. What is the fundamental purpose of the Constitution? A, it limits the power of the president. B, it protects the rights of the people. It provides a framework for the government. And letter D, it encourages the people to participate. The, uh, the answer here is option Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's option C. As a framework for the government, it already includes the description and limits of those in power. Kasama ni Presidente. It protects the people's rights and outlines the responsibilities. And it encourages the people to participate. As a framework, nandiyan na lahat yun sa option C. 139 is option C. 140. The legislative body is tasked to integrate two cultural systems in order to protect the human rights of the people. Which of the following describes the two cultural systems? Values based on the indigenous languages, values based on the western languages, values based on the indigenous and western languages, makatao, makabayan, makakalikasan, and makadios. What's your answer, teacher? <laughs> the answer here is, yeah, it's option C. These are the two cultural systems the the indigenous culture and the western um culture the 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 culture based on western languages okay 140 is option c 141 which of these statements does not concur with the characteristics of values a the differences in cultural values lie in the differences in the people's concept of what is good and bad Two persons may differ in the behavioral values and may still be both judged as moral persons. The young should not be blamed for being disrespectful because respect as a value has changed through the years. D. It is alright for people to differ in perceptions of things for as long as they are all directed to the truth. Hmm. What's your answer, teacher? Number 141. The answer is option... Yeah, it's op option C. Respect is an objective value. Options A, B, and D are all subjective values. However, the values of respect 
And option C, does not concur to the characteristic of the values of respect as objective. Okay? 141 is option C. 142. The human person as an embodied spirit fulfills his or her being human by becoming a religious person, elevating his or her material self to spiritual self, becoming spiritual as he or she grows older, satisfying his or her material needs ahead of spiritual needs. The answer here is option. Did you get that? This can be done in many different ways, you know. Being spiritual is different from being religious and being spiritual doesn't happen. When we grow older, right here, right now, you can be a spiritual person. 143 is option B. 143. Which statement is true about conscience? It is the moral judge of the mind that makes the person see what is good and what is right. It is the attitude of the person, whether favorable or not, favorable towards something. It is the choice of the person to follow what he thinks is right and good. It is the person's remorseful feeling about something he or she has done wrong. And the answer here is, it is the moral judge of the mind that makes the person see what is good and what is bad. Okay? Conscience. That's a philosophical name for conscience. Moral judge of the mind. Judgment of reason. 143 is option A. 144. To be a moral person is to... Be integrated in speech, feelings, thinking, and action. Live with others peacefully. Be acceptable to the society beyond reproach. Know and act upon the ought to be and the ought to do. What's your answer, teacher? Yeah, integrity once again. Unity, union. Transcendental one. Okay, 144 is option A. 145. Which of the following statements is not true as regards the philosophy of St. Augustine? A. God created human in a mortal body with an immortal soul. God created human good, but the good in human ceases to be good when he turns himself or herself away from God. Human can attain perfection if he or she stays with God. Human is substantially a uni uni united body and soul. Okay, option A, B, and C, they are all Augustines. And option D is Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas. Okay, 145, option D. If you want to know the life of St. Augustine, which is super interesting, please check the video, The Life and Works of St. Augustine. I made a video about his life and uh, some philosophical views. Uh, just an overview, it's a short video, good for you to know Augustine because usually he also comes out in the board exam so check that out 145 option D 146 which of the following statements is not justifiable based on the effects of an, of an action a the bad effects comes first before the good effects the good effect must outweigh the bad effect the action which produces double effects is good in itself the good effect must not come from the evil effect. So what is this? What's your answer here, teacher? Um, in the principle of double effect, the action with a possible harmful effect are permissible if, first condition, if the nature of the act is in itself good or at least morally neutral. Second condition, the agent or the person intends the good effect and does not intend the bad effect either as a means to the good or as an end in itself. Okay, so that's the second condition. The third condition is the good effect outweighs the bad effect. So, which is not well, yung hindi not justifiable based on the principle of double effect. And the answer here is yeah. The bad effect comes first. The bad effect comes first before the good effects. So, yan ang sagot. Option A. 146. Option A. 147. Which of the following refers to the behavioral level of human nature? A. The realities in the flesh of the human body. The mode of reaction to a situation. 
the bodily structure and color of the skin, the mental reaction to a given stimulus. And your answer here is option A, as I explained already in item 107, is part of the principles related to the human nature. Option B is behavioral, option C is somatic, and option D is attitudinal. And the answer here is option D, B. <laughs> That's very good. 147, option B. 148, which of the following statements justifies the concept that human is the only being in action? A. Human being possesses intellect that enables him or her to know the nature of his or her action. B. Human beings know that he or she is free to perform or not to perform an action. C. Human being possesses spiritual faculties that enables him or her to know and decide to act or not to act. And letter D. Human being possesses a will that enables him or her to choose. What is your answer, teacher? The best answer here is... Yeah! <laughs> 148 is option C. 149. Which of the following does not characterize the nature of a human person? A. The person is endowed with a thinking mind to enable him to accumulate knowledge for himself or herself more than anything else. The person relates with his or her social environment to deepen his or her sense of common good. It is natural for the human person to fall short of maturity because of a weakness of his or her will to do good. And letter D, the human person's historicity is a significant part of what he or she is at present and what he or she can be in the future. What's your answer, teacher? 149. Option A is the correct answer here. Options B, C, and D characterize the nature of a human person. Okay? The first one is does not. Okay, 149. Option A. 150. Which of the following should be done in order to effectively ma maximize the formation of the intellect among children? A. Parents should teach their children at a very early age in order for them to learn more. Leave the children alone in their rooms with their computers so they will have more freedom to browse the internet. Holy macaroni. C. Expose the children to adult materials to encourage them to grow maturely ahead of time. <laughs> Pinilit. Hinug sa pilit. Letter D. Allow the children more time for studying than playing so they will get used to more serious work than pleasure. And the most sensible answer here, the best answer here is... Yeah. Parents should teach their children at a very early age in order for them to learn more. Okay, did you get it? 150 is option A. Congratulations! Now... Let's count your score. How many points did you get, teacher? I would love to see them, your score, down there in the comment section. 150 over 150 ba? Or 130 over 150? <laughs> Pag hindi mo pa na-reach yung 113 and above, sige pa, grind more pa. Okay, more drills pa. Para ma-hit ang target and to top the board exam. So congratulations, and with that, thank you for staying with me in this set one drills. All the best to you, teachers.